We're going to have Jim Jeffries in here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, Jim Jeffries. I walked by the Apple store last night. Oh, uh, in tribute? Got one in my uh, neighborhood. And yeah, man, they got the fucking uh, the flowers, the candles, the pictures, yeah. the uh, and apples. A lot of apples. Yeah, a lot of Macintosh apples. With a bite taken out of it. What does that mean? Uh, maybe it's like the. Uh, yeah, is that all it is? I'm thinking maybe it's like uh, the missing man formation when the pilot uh, <laughs> dies or something like that, or maybe uh, the ride of his horse. <laughs> That is hilarious. We got to bring that to everyone's attention. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but re- really quickly, so people are going, oh, all right. So the app, the, the bite out of the apple is just for the logo. Okay, fine. Yeah, I yeah. thought there might be even a little more than that involved because all the apples had bites out of them. But then they had post-its on the window. What is that about? Post-its? Lots of colored post-its. Is that what, colored? No, come on. It's 2011, <laughs> Opie. Could you not use that? I saw a picture of those. Are those just people writing, like, we got, I got well wishes, writing little things. But yeah. why? And they're just using post-its. Was he maybe probably. known? Was he maybe known around I'm the office? Think, pro- probably for stickies, because doesn't doesn't Mac have stickies? Oh wait a minute, oh. they do have stickies. All right, that's probably what that's all. Yes. about. I, I figured it was just because all of their their stores are glass, so it's just easy to. It was just easy. Post it, 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 I was just wondering the wonder stickies if more thing. To that it. does make total yeah, sense. Makes sense. See, I like st- I see. like stickies. Yeah. I'm smart. I'm smart. <laughs> yeah, look at that. A bunch of stickies. Stickies on the windows. Yeah, yeah. See, I, 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 I like the stickies. Uh, I took a pic. I'll tweet it. Stickies are very handy. Yeah. You just jot some shit down. You write it down. Jot it down, Rob. Yeah, you you know get what? an idea. Jot it down. The, the one thing I hate about post-its or stickies or whatever is that I always like to fold stuff and put it in my pocket. And you can't you can't write something on a post-it and put it in your pocket. No, you can't. <laughs> Be very careful. You can't fucking fold it. it. Because it sticks to itself. That's hence the sticky. And, and the other thing about Steve Jobs, people, he's dead. People are just <laughs> people are just fucking weird. You know the the turtleneck he fucking uh, wore. Yeah. The sales increased a hundred percent. Really? Everyone went From out one with, to two. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what that's about. But it's everyone went out order. and got turtlenecks because the guy order died. One. Hard it's, to order one in a five inch neck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's actually just a regular shirt sleeve that they put on wrong. Do you have something that could go around a vertebrae? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're all being bought by fucking gardener snakes and cobras. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The guy's dead. Yeah, Jesus. fucking Oscar the ostrich. I just ordered a turtleneck. <laughs> the ostrich. You had to have it. Taken in. <laughs> yeah, Pelican's wearing them as pants. What else is skinny? <laughs> uh, God damn. But yeah. why, why buy a turtleneck? In all the seriousness, it's, so... pro- it's probably Halloween. People want to be Steve oh, Jobs they're going to be dead. Good, Steve, wow. Steve Jobs zombie. You're going to see Steve oh, Jobs yeah. zombie. Number one Halloween costume. You're Steve gonna, Jobs zombie. Well, iPhone with you, right? Some, somebody will print up an, an Apple. Uh, I, I died shirt. And, I died you know, with a small the big Halloween eye, costume. right? And then you just go around going, uh, Apple. I'll probably say, like, Jobs. Everyone's getting Jobs in heaven. That's great. That's great, Chip. You work on that for Halloween. <laughs> he just... <laughs> he just Jimmy just stares at me with the chip face. It has nothing to do with radio. No. But it's hilarious. <laughs> it's just an energy drain. Uh, it really, it really is. It's a vacuum. It's taxing. It really is. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. And I think there's a story we've been following very closely. Ooh. <laughs> the, the grocery worker. I, I remember reading this a while ago, right? Yeah. Uh, well, the grocery grocery worker, excuse me, uh, admits I gave out semen tainted yogurt. <laughs> Remember oh, this guy? God, yes. <laughs> uh, a grocery store worker accused of handing out a semen tainted yogurt sample at an <laughs> Albuquerque market pleaded guilty Thursday. Under terms of his plea agreement, Anthony uh, Garcia admitted oh. he tainted a sample of the yogurt he was handing out at a market in January. He also admitted putting some of his semen on a plastic spoon <laughs> that he placed with the yogurt. What a fucking prick, man. It's hilarious. Though. Oh, yeah, unless you're the guy going. Of course, <laughs> but half this shit is hilarious unless it happens to you. That's why I, I, w- I would never eat any samples any fucking time. Because you know those people are miserable. You yes. know they're picking their nose, scratching their balls, Horrible. whatever. Now, if you're a guy and you get the semen-tainted yogurt, right, oh, yeah. do you say anything? Because you can't go, hey, this tastes like cum. 
Yeah, cause uh, like, how do you know it tastes like cum? Uh, what do you do? So is it only like the women that are reporting this? Yeah, right. uh, it's like this tastes like guy, this tastes like pussy after I blow my load in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she knew there was a problem though because he, he took the yogurt and he threw it on her back. <laughs> she said, "This is wrong. There's some in my hair." <laughs> Uh, Garcia then approached the female. That, that This is after he put a little on the spoon. A little on the Come. spoon. Uh, approached the female customer and offered her a sample. <laughs> what an antisocial behavior that is. That really is. Yeah. There's something fucking what going on. What did he not get as a child? Holy yeah. shit. Uh, yeah, come on a spoon, exactly. <laughs> woman told police that after tasting the sample, she spit it on the floor. Well, fuck. Ah, uh, fucking. Was, what a bad date she is. No shit. It. Yeah, she went out to the car real quick, rolled down the window, and spit it out. <laughs> She's used to. <laughs> she testified, so she takes, uh, she tastes it, then she spits it on the floor several times and wiped her mouth on the garment. Oh, she goes back for seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then she made him lick it off because she's a cuckoldress. <laughs> uh, then she wiped her mouth on her the garment she was wearing to get the taste out of her mouth. Investigators collected samples of the woman's spit from the floor and oh, took the boy. garment she was wearing as evidence. And they got the DNA uh, from that. And yeah. it was his fucking jizz. Uh, faces three years. Yeah. That's a really antisocial thing. Followed man. by three years of supervised release. Release? That was the problem. Yeah. Supervised yeah. release. They always have to work. Yeah, you got to watch him. You got to make sure it. he doesn't put it in you there. Don't keep it out of that spoon. <laughs> we don't. There are clever guys uh, writing these news stories and just uh, will change yeah. things subtly. Release. Why do they have to use release? <laughs> What a yeah. creep. I never fucking taste samples, open things like that. I, I don't fucking do no, it. I get creeped out by that, too. Do. And by the way, if uh, if we're ever out at a bar and, and a listener uh, buys a, a drink and Kenny is around, he will not allow us to drink it no, if, it's, if it's open. I know. Like if it's a, a closed <laughs> bottle of beer and then, you know, I pop the top, that's fine. But if Kenny's around... He will not allow any of us to drink a beer that a listener gives us. Because you don't know. They'll slip you a Mickey. Well, what's <laughs> worse than that is seeing you cry because uh, you're not allowed to have the beer. I know. When Kenny <laughs> takes it away, I do. I start crying like, like a, a baby, baby. <laughs> whose baba has been taken away. <laughs> Kenny, yes? I have another helpful hint. Yeah. Oh, yes, Kenny. A minute ago, you were talking about Post-it notes. Yes. Well, what I do is I'll take one Post-it note. And then take another post-it note and stick them together, and that's how I put them in my pocket or like fold them. at 180 degrees, right. so one of the sticky parts are on the other one, and then there's no exposed sticky, and now you have two sides to work with. Right, that's what I personally do. I that's wish you'd genius. put them over your mouth and nose. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, I just fold it, actually. I fold it in half, and just wherever it goes, and I, sometimes yeah. the writing's in half, yeah. You know yeah. what the, the I thing it is? Out. It's not that sticky where it can't be peeled back apart, but there is just something... We're not talking about crazy glue. Like here, annoying right. about having that shit. sticky part on unless you're... But then, you know, well, you, you might as well like, just buy a little notepad. You act like it's the La Brea Tar Pit stuff. <laughs> I stuck yeah. on a notepad. They had to come and get me off. I'm not a fucking mouse in a trap. <laughs> yeah, this I haven't moved in eight hours. You're with Uncle Junior with his hand stuck in the fucking yeah. sink. And, and, <laughs> and the fans with the beverages, so now you know. Yeah, don't just don't, don't do it. Don't open it. Don't open it. Right, leave it closed. Yeah, and don't buy me tap beer, you yeah, cheapos. He, Anthony and, you know, Opie... They appreciate the gesture. Right. But next time, just hand us cash. Yeah, we'll buy yeah. our own. But yeah. just, you know, hand lots us the cash. Yeah. Or say, set them up, bartender. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. And don't burden them with small bills. No. No. Yeah. I want to be able to tip the bartender, too, with what you give me. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I don't. Yeah, because people come over sometimes, and the bottle's open, and you're like, you could have just, like. Dropped a hit of acid in it. It's yeah. fucking weird. Yeah, I don't need that. Put yeah. a boogie on her spitting it because you're not Freak fucking you're not a fan. Yeah. yeah, it could be some guy that doesn't even fucking like the show. There's plenty it, of them. It was like this cop movie I was watching one time. Uh-huh. This cop, he didn't like his boss because the boss was like a micromanager and always up everybody's ass. Yeah, sounds like a And, you know, he liked to boss people around. He was very, like, autocratic. What a scumbag. So, like, um, the boss would, you know, want coffee at the beginning of the shift. Uh-huh. So, uh, in this movie, yeah. the cop would go to Dunkin' Donuts and get the coffee and then oh. slip a volume in it. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, I got to get that. Is that on Netflix? Can I get it on Netflix? Yeah, it's streaming. Streaming oh. on Netflix. It's streaming. Yeah, it's okay. called Coffee Cup Cop. <laughs> <laughs> That's so 
sounds like an awful. Yeah, coffee cup that cop. Would be terrible. <laughs> Coffee cup. <laughs> no, it's very, it's intrigue and mystery. And, yeah, but but what is the movie poster? It's probably a big white cup with coffee cup cop written in like coffee colored, like spilled coffee letters on the fucking. Oh, uh, yeah. So it looks like it's spilling out of the coffee cup. cup. But then cop has to be spelt like, like police is spelt on a car yeah. or something, you know? Like yeah. the NYPD logo. Right, like coffee cop. cup is on the cup and then right, cop and then is. Right, and then cop, you know. You know. Maybe it's just a guy grabbing a tit. <laughs> Just for the hell of it. It's cop. Yeah, oh, you're copping a field. Yeah. <laughs> coffee cop. Coffee, coffee cop. cop. That's... What a bomb that movie would be. <laughs> what is that? Wait, coffee, coffee cop, cop guy. <laughs> it says coffee cop guy. Boy, you sure find things quickly, Danny. Exactly. There's a coffee cup. The Sam couldn't that? find coffeecupguy.com. <laughs> Sam couldn't find a coffee cup. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what did you I don't tweet. Stop. My mother wouldn't yell at me. Mm. Where's Where that Sam? fruit? I don't know. I don't know, but I got where the, people go? I got the big it? invite yesterday. Did everybody else? No. For no. what? The wedding? Oh. I didn't get the yes, no invite. I got the when invite. When is that about? It's yeah. it's coming up next year. Well, when next year? So I could fucking mark it down and book a gig. I, I'll tell you because <laughs> there's also like you got to make your hotel reservation. Right. And I'm staying in the good hotel. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I want a suite. Ten bucks more. A ten bucks more for a suite. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, why didn't I get... Oh, I haven't checked my mail in two weeks. I, I haven't either it. in about few days. That's oh the problem. No, I'm not even joking. When you live in a building, Jimmy knows. You just walk right in. I, you want to just get up to your apartment so you don't go to the mailbox. I haven't checked yeah. my mail in two weeks. Wow, you better check that shit. Ah, I'm trying to live You like best an check animal. that shit. You know what? Also, their invitation, uh, it's a lovely picture yeah. of Sam and Jess standing next to each other. Um, and then the, on the back... There's a little magnetic strip, so you could put it on uh, your refrigerator mm -hmm. and uh, always be reminded uh, that, the, that the the invitation is there. Um, and then uh, I didn't my, get my that. chick, my you chick is. Well, you must have got a fancy one. I got it, but yeah. you, you probably didn't notice. There's a I little got magnetic, the low budget one. Magnetic yeah. strip on the back. No, he got a ditto. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, it's, like you know, it's like about it. those magnets. I gotta look at my stupid cousin for the next ten years because he got really? married about two years ago. But the magnet's so good, I, I keep it on my refrigerator. You keep it there. They're they're married already. But here's the deal. Here, what do you do with those magnets? Because well, I don't want to go out and buy regular magnets, so I use these dumb uh, save the date magnets. Well, I get forever. I get off on I I get off the hook on that because my chick then goes to stick it on the fridge, and I just started laughing at her. I go. Stainless steel is not magnet. You can't stick ah, a magnet to it. So she, she puts it on, and it falls off. And she the puzzled look on her face, like, <laughs> it's metal. I'm like, no, magnetic stainless steel isn't. Ah. It, it doesn't have magnetic properties to so it. So then you walk over it's, to the garbage and fucking drop it in the garbage. No, now it's leaning in the little nook by the fridge, like yeah. leaning up against something. And uh, look at the lovely Sam and Jess. Uh, Can invitation. I see the magnets? I, nice. I didn't know that you couldn't. I have a stainless steel fridgey too. Yeah, and I had can't. no idea. Me it too. doesn't stick to stainless steel. What's that? What Fingerprints they... sure do, though. I tell you, what a chore. I know. Smudges yes. and marks. You need special cleanser for it. Do you? Yeah. Oh. You're yeah, you can't just oh, clean yeah. it. It's very, it's very difficult to get to I throw up. bleach on it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just like you should your sheets and everything else. <laughs> AIDS. It's it's a great. It. Some great <laughs> magnets. magnets are... Some great magnets images. Oh, uh, God. Uh, that's on ruffle. Not fucking ruffle. <laughs> Dude, you want to... One more fucked up story. One more. You got a couple burglars, right? Burglars? What year is this? Two burglars. Yeah. In, oh, uh, broke into my apartment. Oh. Oh, boy. I Bur hate this story. Oh, no. You saw this, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, this oh, is boy. a fucked up story. So you got two burglars. They, yeah. They, they fucking break into your place. They're looking for blank CDs. I'm sure they, they've, you know, got other th stuff. Yeah. But they saw blank CDs, so they, uh, they, they, they steal them from this guy, right? Uh-huh. And he reported them stolen. And the guy oh, reported stolen? Boy. Yeah. What an idiot. Turns out um, there was... Child porn. Oh, burglars no. stole these CDs. Child porn on the CDs. Uh huh. So then these motherfucking burglars report the guy. <laughs> <laughs> they turned him in. Fuck. Oh wow, he looks like a real creep. He looks like Jason Alexander a little bit. Oh, Craig that's Craig. Stalker. <laughs> Uncle Paul you know, you know Craig Stalker? <laughs> yeah, he loaned him a bunch of CDs. Oh, you did? He's saying they got stole, but he done that before. Oh, he just wants you to send him more. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Mm. Like him a lot. One juvenile and a 19-year-old broke into uh, Craig Stocker's barn in uh, Delhi, Cal California, 
and uh, stole 50 CDRs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stock had reported them stolen. I'm kind of surprised he yeah. wanted to uh, draw attention to himself, mm, knowing what was taken. But what he probably didn't have them backed up, and that was probably... If he had 30 CDs with child porn on him, that was probably a fucking 10-year stash that he's been jerking off to. Oh, he was and he's probably so thinking bummed. of the ungettable ones. Like, oh, no, that news group is gone. Yeah, oh, damn it. How am I going to get that back? But literally, they couldn't prove that they stole them from you. I and mean, then again, his fingerprints are probably all over them, too. So. Uh, nah. Yeah, yeah. I know, you know, they that's... couldn't prove that he put the child porn on them. He's probably got a good case. To get, no. uh, to get off of it, I bet. Maybe, but his computers they raided, I guarantee his stuff's on his computer. Oh, yeah, there's probably stuff on the computer. No, no. Unless maybe... he thought putting them on disc and stashing them in his barn right. uh, would be safe, but I'm sure they'll they take his computer. And they could probably backtrace what you put on there. And there's also, um, what should we call it? Um, I forget what I was going to say. Um, yeah, there's ways they could just fucking go to, to his hard and drive. And find out it's you. For computer forensics. Sam, yeah, you got to see if the nine-year-old image is on the computer, Sam. I've been looking at the same one for four hours and stirring feelings in me. I don't touch him. I just look at him like the colonel. That's so small, Sam. I take him on my boat. Yeah, even your genitals would look big in their little tiny hands. Yeah, Abigail, she's small and I give her pills and she falls asleep. I give the children codeine. I give them codeine, and my friend Paul Hargis brings his camera. <laughs> Jim C. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Quincy uh, hey, enjoys the young yeah. stuff. Sorry, John. Yeah, well. I was, uh, I, I tweeted the other day that I, it was a very exciting tweet, that I had watched The Odd Couple. Uh, and uh, the, bo- the boom operator just uh, kept d- dipping the boom oh, yeah. into the shot. Uh, that show is still fucking funny, though, man. Mm-hmm. Great writing. That goddamn show is fucking funny. It's just you, 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 they they just don't put that shit out. How does New York look? New York looks gritty. Not not the open because we've talked about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the open's a little. But uh, they have a scene in New York here and there. And that every show, right? so often they they would be out on the streets or they would do those scenes like from the top of a cop car or inside right. a cab right. where, where they do like uh, voiceover. You hear them talking to each other, but you just see through the cab window. It's just Fucking ill, New York. Right. That just that dirty bust fuel. Wasn't there just bust soot, bust oh, soot everywhere? Yeah. It was on everything. It was it, it, you bah, forget. bust and pull away, <laughs> bah, bah, and just soot pouring out of it. All, all of a sudden, you would look like a um, in person. What? Yes. You actually would. A bus would pass by, and you'd all start going, Mommy, Mommy, how I love you, how I love you. <laughs> Let me do a 90-year-old vaudeville joke. It's still funny. Oh, it is. And we oh, forgot that. that face. We yeah. forgot they cleaned that shit up. They did, yes. It used to be soot everywhere. Yeah, New York's kind of bright now. It's weird. There used to be this weird cloud that just always hung over, Everything no matter how just, sunny it was. had soot on it. Yeah, so Everything. soot. Sooty. We, uh, we should break. We'll get Jim Jeffries in here. Yes. We'll do some other things. Certainly. Uh, nothing to tease, I guess. You got something cool to play? Oh, I almost forgot. Yeah. November 3, 4, 5, Stress Factory. That's yes. Good. That's a good plug right there. So yes. That was a solid fucking plug. Yes, it sounded like I was going to help the show with some uh, suggestion of a bitch. You, you did help the show with that plug. Absolutely. now people will go and laugh. That's a, that's a sellout waiting to happen. When do the tickets go on sale? They're on sale now. Oh, uh, it'll sell out. I yeah, hope so. Very, of course very it quickly. will. Very cool. Oh, I, for your lips to God. Are you going to have to do like 12 <laughs> shows for Vinny? Is he no. going to start shoving shows at you? I think I'm only I doing... I think we could do four <laughs> on Sunday. Ah, uh, well. I wish I could do his voice. Progeria kid. How many has he got you doing? Two, uh, two. One, two, two. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. One, uh, two, he's two. He's going to squeeze that Sunday at you. You think he's going to do that? He's, no. Yeah, yeah, I won't yeah, do it. Yeah. He's going to try to squeeze that Sunday. I won't do it. No? No. Your day of rest? I have to get it's up a religious for work, you know? Yeah. Maybe we'll squeeze that third show on a Saturday. No. 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 Absolutely not. No. Hey, uh, I just no. want to... I just want to say hi to the uh, uh, Gotham Comedy Club. They, they treated me like a star last night. Oh, yeah? And I really appreciate That's it. That's good. And I was able to wear my hat, which That's is mighty nice. white of them. Why wouldn't you? Well, last time uh, 
I might have had a problem with my hat. <laughs> Who asked you to take <laughs> your hat off? They didn't know or anything. It's fine. Wait, somebody in the goth somebody asked you to take your hat off? Yeah, that was a while ago. Why? I'm way past it's Tony it. Soprano. <laughs> I, I don't even know if the guy works there anymore, but yeah. What do they say? You got they don't like hats in there. It's their thing. It's fine. Makes the place uh, look, uh, you know, shabby. Yeah. Yeah, right. coming with a hat on. But no. they, were, they were great, man. And they they, they, okay. they picked up my bill and everything. They didn't have to do any of that shit. But that was nice of you, and I just want to acknowledge that. So, Cool place, too. <laughs> I, I like You like uh, Gotham? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Jimmy's busy on this quarter. No, no, no. <laughs> just... I just I was just hearing farts and it made me kind of chuckle. <laughs> All right, Jim Jeffries next, and we got uh, Cliff. Uh, what's his name there? John Ratzenberger. John, John Ratzenberger. Ratzenberger. We can't call him Cliff. Well, you know, Cliff Clavin was just one of the many characters he portrays. No, uh, I think he was a one-hit wonder. Toy Story. He's a one-hit wonder, isn't um, he? No. I don't acknowledge uh, he, he voiceovers. Did, he did that show where he kind of went around the world uh, uh, hanging out with people. Oh, now. I just completely laid a whole line out, didn't I? Oh, now. <laughs> what is with the crickets, Opie? <laughs> For some patients, the ability to communicate is not an option. Look over and be like some 80-year-old woman with her legs spread. But one man is about to change their lives forever. Did someone say something? For the terminally ill who live in darkness. What the fuck is that? Dr. Anthony Cumia. <laughs> who said that? Has found a way to bring light to their remaining days on Earth. Your ass talked to me. Using a rare gift he never knew he had. Oh my God, what have I done? He'll learn to love those he never knew existed. I think I know what you're going for. You're going for sexy, you're coming off as whiny. Oh, and a picture. What a hot voice that is. And depends on their garments. I love it. Present a true story. You're an ass. Of one man's inability to distinguish a voice from a fart. You're talking out your ass. The Ass Whisperer. Coming soon. Oh, stop it. To the Opie and Anthony Show. I like to sing, man. I'll sing a little bit. Everyone's watching to see what you will do. A piece of my heart. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Norton uh, just wailing it. Norton on the singing vocals there. Some uh, Lover Boy. That's terrific. That I'm eating great. the equivalent of a fucking of wet sand in a sock. <laughs> <laughs> this dry ass energy wrap. You wanted one? <laughs> that is Danny recommended, by that's the way. Danny's uh, uh, go to meal. That's not, how not he, only, Danny got back into shape. That I I knew that this was going to happen, but I told Jim not to have one because he was going to complain about how dry it was going to be. Yeah, I, mean, I forgot though. <laughs> like literally, I want to go regrab my fucking bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than some so thick you can't fucking get Shove it down. Up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you found something. Thing <laughs> Not white. <laughs> uh, we, we were talking about a lot of shit oh, during the break there. You, you mentioned, Obi yeah. mentioned how uh, Imus looks like, uh, yeah. like, uh, like a Civil War general. A Civil War general. <laughs> Absolutely, because our pal Jay Moore was just on there. He yeah. just, he just, his whole face looks like it's holding back the N-word. <laughs> it probably is, <laughs> one, especially after those shenanigans. But he's, he's actually looking better than he did uh, even a couple of months ago. Like, he, he right. put on some weight. Uh, and he does have quite a head of hair for a, an older gentleman. Yeah. It's amazing. 
Isn't it? Like, I was watching that uh, George Harrison documentary, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. Scorsese put together that George Harrison documentary. What well, where's that on? It's fucking amazing. It's on HBO. HBO. I got to watch it. It is I fucking great. It's, you don't it's like even, six hours or something. It, it, yeah. It's, what? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Fuck that. I haven't seen... No, dude. <laughs> I'll invest three. It's yeah. fucking amazing. Six no, hours. Three? That's a Ringo documentary. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> By the way, Jim Jeffries in studio, of course. They have... Uh, pictures and video you didn't realize even early very early on in the Beatles uh, uh, career there were people just taking fucking so many pictures of these guys yeah. there's like pictures of, of uh, uh, George at, at 17 years old uh, and with the band and stuff right. and just at these clubs and it's it's weird because it was a long fucking time ago and people didn't have camera phones mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. so you needed a photographer there with a, a good camera mm -hmm. and uh, they always had these chicks around that seemed to be very good at photography and there's a lot of really artistic photos of, uh, the, of all it's the Beatles. It's a couple in Germany. Yes, um, yes. Stu Sutcliffe ran off with the bird and he had the hemorrhage. You watch that movie with the, with the backbeat or whatever. Oh, it's with Stephen yeah, 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 yeah. Dorff. Oh. Yeah, yeah right. Stephen Dorff in it. Do you think yeah. uh, Lennon was attracted to the, the to, Sutcliffe? To, to the, to the, oh, and, well, so there's a lot of rumors about Lennon and the cock, isn't there? Because yeah. of <laughs> Brian Epstein. There's yeah, like yeah, the, Brian uh, Epstein was there. Were a few uh, rumors with the Lennon there. Definitely. Yeah, but uh, uh, Sutcliffe, he was a good-looking lad. He had a bit of the James Dean about him. Yeah, Sutcliffe. He, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, like, look at all these pictures. That it's so, like, yeah, we would, we well, would dress like Teddy boys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, so we joined a skiffle band. Skiffle band. <laughs> yeah, stupid <laughs> skiffle like band. Teddy boys. And, you know, we didn't get into the leather until. You know, well, Brian. and then Brian later. Epstein came along and put us into suits, <laughs> yeah. and we thought, all right, let's get into the suits then. <laughs> what, if what? we're going to do this, let's do it properly. But Lennon hated the fucking suits. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. want to be a Teddy boy? I tell you what, when you yeah. go visit Weren't they Lennon's real tough guys, Jim, they they were like people say that their image is weird, but they were tough guys for real, right? We well, see. Lemmy yeah. Lem yeah. always said that. Lemmy said that in his biography that he said they they played the Stones as being the t uh, working class, but the boys right. and the and the. Uh, Beatles being the posh boys, that couldn't be further from the they truth. They were the Liverpool guys. They that were from fucking, Liverpool. Yeah. They were hard as fucking nuts. Yep. And uh, and the Stones were the London fags, man. You know, yeah, yeah, like they, yeah. were, they came from the private schools and yep. the, all that type of stuff. They were telling a story about how uh, at, at some wedding, some woman was uh, gets up and just starts playing the piano very nicely and everything. And uh, John... Just walked over and dumped a beer over her head. <laughs> dumped a pint right over her fucking head because he just didn't like what she was doing. Said something nasty and walked away. And the woman was just kind of sat there, got up, and dried herself off. But Every single yeah. ex-girlfriend of John Lennon has a story about, then he beat me up in the corridor. <laughs> and, and I thought, enough is enough. Yeah. But he had a charm about him because they just want to get they just want to get on the documentaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, you can't just go, well, he was abusive. A and a bit of a cunt. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, the documentary shows uh, that, that side of them early on where they really were just punks. Yeah. And shit, and then they they put him in the suits. Love, love me do you know I love you? And they they do all that shit. And then their their real personalities came out um, later on when they started taking acid and shit, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and decided you know uh, we don't want to do this fucking lovey dovey stupid mm -hmm. uh, uh, twelve year old girl shit anymore. Did you ever see that movie Nowhere Nowhere Boy? Nice. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Which really one was that? that one? No. That was the one that just came out last year. It was like uh, it got nominated and stuff. Like yeah. it was a very popular film and it's just about John Lennon's childhood up until about seventeen. Oh, but someone's playing. Oh that. wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather see the documentary. No, it's a really good film though. Really the good. The documentary's film. great. Now I, I was as I was watching I'll have it, to check out Nowhere Boy. I didn't know Scorsese did this mm. uh, a documentary on George Harrison. And I'm watching it and just thinking how the fuck? I go, this is so well made yeah. and so well put together. And you could tell so much work went into it. Yeah. And then it's like Martin Scorsese. I'm like, oh, fucking. Did, I, I, geez, no I haven't seen okay. the documentary yet. Um, and I re I'm a big Beatles fan. Mm -hmm. Does at any stage does Clapton just go, yeah, I fucked him over? Uh, no, but but it, I only saw the first half so far. I'm, I still have to see the second half. Uh, but Clapton's in a lot of the first half talking about how he kind of was always in awe of them. Mm. Uh, and and whenever he'd be in like a restaurant uh, or or a bar or something, people would be like, "Fuck, that's Eric Clapton, Eric Clapton." And then like one of the Beatles would walk in, and Eric Clapton was just a piece of shit now sitting <laughs> in the corner. No one wanted to talk. Well, how about you he could see another like place Clapton, to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> but you could see Clapton had like this 
and still does have this thing about the Beatles that they were they were the shit. Yeah, yeah. And he was like a notch below them. Well, that woman uh, that was both of their wives. They, yeah, they yeah. They reckon yeah. there's no one who's ever had more top ten hits written about her than her because Clapton wrote all of his and she was just an extra on a hard day's night. She was just what, like some model. What songs were written about her? Um, What's some, the list? Some things like the big one from George Harrison, the big one yeah. from uh, that Clapton cunt, is, that, uh, that cunt left me. Is, uh, that was a good one. Is the way you look tonight? <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. Is the two oh, big wow. songs, but then there's a plethora of other songs wow, underneath. Okay. That are, uh, What's, how does something go? Oh, that's a oh, cr- I love something. <laughs> something I, in the way. Oh, after the you movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kevin yeah. from Connecticut. Yeah. Ringo killed seven people while on tour in Canada. Is that true? Um, You're a big Beatles fan. Killed I, I, I killed people. six people. <laughs> Not seven. <laughs> I don't like these slanderous remarks coming my way. That's wow, funny. that's good, man. But well, do you want to know how we know how to do that? Is because like, I think do, you guys had George Carling doing um, Thomas the Tank Engine. Was that correct? He did the narration on a couple of seasons. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he... the narrator for Thomas the Tank Engine in the rest of the world is Ringo Starr. Oh right, yes. So yeah, here we yeah. go. Then the fat controller came and said, "Come on, Thomas, time to leave the station." <laughs> <laughs> so every, everyone knows that one. Yeah. And then and then you have your your George. Yeah, man, yeah George. George. <laughs> yeah, and, and All right and, there, John, enough of that. I love that, <laughs> I love that, I love that documentary where he goes uh where where Ringo's talking about like uh like uh then 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 John came in with his photo of him and Yorko with his fucking cock out. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Come on, John. This is a bother. <laughs> bother. And then John said, you just have to answer the phone ring. And I thought, all right, then. <laughs> all of his interviews are just... Everything, every time they go, then Paul was being a bit of a cunt. And, yeah. And then George was unhappy with the situation because he wasn't getting to write enough songs. And That's John it. was on LSD laying in the ground. And then Ringo was like... I just wasn't paying attention to him. <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, I was just happy to be working. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because that's exactly what he does in the documentary, man. Uh, fucking uh, uh, Paul, Paul actually at one point also, and it was kind of weird and very candid to hear because you never really hear Paul say anything like curse yeah, yeah. or anything during his career. And he's been like the the clean, squeaky clean kind of Beatle guy. Mm. Uh, but he sits there and was talking about George's hair. And how he had this giant quaffed hair when he was 17, when he first met him. And uh, to hear Paul go, he's like, and I looked at him as, it's like you're wearing a fucking turban. (laughs) He's got a fucking turban on his head. Uh, to, to get that kind of candor out of uh, Paul, it was, and he's just sitting down. And you know what? To have a documentary where you got Paul McCartney sitting in a chair, Mm. just talking about the Beatles. And like Scorsese's fucking doing a camera move slowly around Paul and the lighting is impeccable it just it looked amazing yeah yeah and uh, then you know like I said when I found out it was Scorsese it's like oh yeah well silly ma- <laughs> like oh oh yeah Scorsese wasn't making a shitty looking it film was, wow it wasn't some students with a, with a flip <laughs> right, camera right yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a great document I, I have a Paul McCartney story if you want to hear it but it's of course it's pretty it's it's anyway I when I first gave up drinking for the first time ever, and I never, this was the first weekend of my adult life I hadn't drunk, oh, I was shit. presenting at the Q Awards in Britain, which is a music magazine in the UK, and I presented the Lifetime Achievement Award to Madness. You know Madness? Madness, sure. Yes, oh, right. house, the heavy, heavy, heavy monster me. sound. Right? So I, wow, very good. I, I presented the award, and then I come off the stage, and I walk into the stage, and I see, like, Robbie Williams sitting there with Take That, and I go, oh, that's interesting. They're getting back together. And then I went, oh, and Paul McCartney. And I went, Paul McCartney. And I stood there and just froze up like yeah, a yeah. fucking spack, yep. right? I didn't move, just... And he gave me this sort of wink and a point that was like, move on. Like, he must do this all day. Like, <laughs> Just like, don't bother. I, I get it. I, I know you're go. stunned. So I go back to my table and my girlfriend's there. And I had me drink. I said, fucking Paul McCartney's here, right? She's fucking leathered. This thing sponsored by, by vodka or whatever. She's drinking these martinis. She goes, Paul McCartney, goes, shut up. It's still what's going on. Later on in the... Later on in the... Uh, later on in the day... After the events were over, uh, my publicist came up to me and they said... Uh, and she goes, uh, do you want to go to the goodies room, like the gift room? 
And I heard about these in movies where yeah, celebrities yeah. just walk. You guys yeah. have probably had this oh, happen, but I've never. No, 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 I, no. Where you walk no. in and they just give you free shit, like right? Like thousands of dollars thousands worth of free like shit. Thousands of jewelry and yeah. shit, right? Jewelry watches, like Rolex yeah. sponsors it. Well, shit. that wasn't Crazy. as big as that, but it was some right. good stuff, good right? Stuff. So yeah. I, I go in there. First thing I say to my drunk girlfriend is, all right, first of all, we're meant to be here, all right? <laughs> Let's not get too excited. And anytime someone gives something to you, go, thank you, but don't go, fucking hell, is this free? Right? <laughs> so I go, we're meant, we're meant to be here. And she goes, right, 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 right. We go in, and then, like, the first thing, she's like, look, that's the type of jeans. I shut up. <laughs> yeah, like right? a scene. So we go in, we're wandering around. I've, let her, I've left her to her own devices, right? I'm getting in this queue. And I'm waiting to get a pen. There's like a hundred pound pen, right? This thing. And I just got to sign a book. I've got, oh, to be, right, we get I've got to be photographed with the pen. And there's all these other celebrities waiting for the pen. And I'm staying by Neil Finn. Now, I don't know if you know Neil Finn. Is Neil Finn was the lead singer from Crowded House. The mm -hmm. now, hey now, the dream it's now in, oh, Austra yeah, in Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. in Australia, that's a huge band. They're actually from New Zealand, oh, yeah, but yeah. in Australia, they're as big as you get. And I was staying behind him, and I was like. Fucking hell, man, that's Neil Finn. And uh, he turned around and said something innocuous like, <laughs> long wait for a pen. And I went, ha, ha, oh, yeah. And then I said, oh, look, look, Neil, I've, I've been a big fan of yours for years, man. I said, and he goes, really? I go, I've actually seen you nine times live when I was a teenager. I would have seen you ten, but that time I was meant to see you the last time, there was an earthquake in Newcastle and the venue smashed down two hours before the show. Wow. And he said, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, all of our roadies and manager died in that. And I was like, no that, fucking way. that would be the gig. Yes, oh, that I shit. just reminded you from oh, 1992 shit. about when all your friends died. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I'm standing there going, oh, fantastic. And then he sort of turns around and I'm of like, oh, for fuck's would. sake. My, my four foot eleven girlfriend rocks up. She's now wearing a top hat like fucking Slash. <laughs> She's got all these bottles of perfume under her arm and she's pairs of jeans. And she's off her tits. And I'm stone sober for the first time ever. And she's like, look at all this shit I've got. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, will you? And Neil Finn turns around and rolls, my, rolls his eyes like, huh, new celebrity, new money. You know, uh, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He like gives a, me that douchebag look, look right? Look what he's got to deal so with. So I'm just standing there with this little drunk. She's going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's still holding all of his stuff. Anyway, five minutes pass. Neil Finn's 21-year-old son walks up wearing a fucking top hat, holding jeans and perfume on his arm. And he's like, look at all this shit I've got, Dad! And I roll my eyes at Neil Finn like, oh. At least I get to fuck her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm standing there, and I'm just... And then, like, Neil Finn's son turns to Neil Finn and goes, Hey, Jim, that's Dad. He goes, hey, Dad, that's Jim Jeffries. And I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm back in. And now you're in. I'm back in with After the Finns. Remind him of yeah, the death yeah, of all of his yeah. loved ones. They can't fuck with me anymore. I'm back in. <laughs> and so I, I said, uh, I said, hello, mate. He goes, can I, have a, can I have a photo with you? I said, only if I can have a photo with your dad. And he went, yeah, oh, yeah, go on. Right? Because I would never ask for a photo yeah. in that situation because yeah, yeah. it was that celebrity room. But now it's a trick. And so off. I go to my girlfriend. I go, I go, well, you got, you got that camera I told you to bring, right? She pulls the oh, camera shit. out. She gets the camera out. She gives me this vacant look, and she sort of does the clicking motion. <laughs> And oh. then she drunkenly walks up and goes, oh, I didn't put batteries in this. <laughs> and I went, I went, oh, that's a fucking shame, isn't it? <laughs> that's a real, that's a, I'm shattered, right? I'm like, oh, that's, oh, uh, what are you, you going to do? Her. So I turned to Neil Finn, I'm like, oh, maybe next time. And then I walk up to my girlfriend and do what every girlfriend and boyfriend, husband and wife have done since the dawn of time. I walk right up close to her face, and just so she can hear, I go, all you had to do was bring the fucking camera, <laughs> right? <laughs> she, she bursts into tears, <laughs> throws all of her shit on the ground, and goes, next time bring your own fucking camera. <laughs> she storms out of the room. Every celebrity's looking at me. Oh, now it's a Neil, scene, yeah. Neil Finn shaking his head. I chase after her on the way out. Paul uh. McCartney stops me and goes, not cool. <laughs> From Paul McCartney, so got my, call. my two biggest heroes in music uh, uh, simultaneously thought I was a douchebag <laughs> within minutes on the first weekend I didn't get drunk. That's <laughs> funny. Wow, it's great. Uh, you
you got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> tell that story at the Stress Factory tonight. Jesus kill. Christ. I'm I'm never, that's fucking I'm, funny, I've man. never told that on stage because I feel it's a bit name-droppy to tell on stage. That's no, it's great. No, Sorry? how you tell it? No. It's way. so By the way, anti-name-dropping. Yeah. What you could have done yeah. is you could have had the son take the picture of you Your and him son. and then traded emails and had him email you the picture. That's yeah. what you do with digital. Yeah, I know. I'm an idiot. Nah, I should have just gone. You should have got McCartney, too. Yeah. Neil Finn's big, huh? Neil Finn. I never well, heard of him. I, um, I, I saw him in concert. That when the band broke up, they had one last concert at the front of Sydney Opera House. 150,000 people showed up. Holy shit. Kevin wow, Connecticut's man. telling me he's uh, the guy from Split Ends. Too. He's also the Split Ends. Him and his yeah. brother had Split Ends. And I then, did not know that. And then they moved on to... Split uh, Ends, of course, I got you. Uh, I got uh, you. Yeah. I see red, I see red, I see red. What else <laughs> do they say besides Hey Now? Hey Now. I know that one. Um, hey, well, like, I'm trying to think of songs that you know. Um, everywhere you go, always take the weather with you. Uh, they Don't really... Know. Didn't it's have only a second big hit. That I should want. They're no, a one hit wonder. You saw them nine times? They, they're massive in Australia. They had like a greatest hits album. They had like 30 songs on. I know every single one by heart. Yeah. Did they do that? I don't know why. That's, um, that's, that's split ends. That's, that's split ends. modern. Oh, okay. uh, what's his name? It's, it's, split all, ends. it's all him and his brother. I get frightened. And they had, they had a, they had a drummer could, called you know? Paul Hester who drummed in both of the bands <laughs> who was sort of involved in the comedy world, right? And when the band broke up, broke up, he never got over it, and uh, he fucking went and hung himself from a tree in the middle of Melbourne Park, right? Wow. And then the band got back together. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, what an was, asshole. That's yeah. a little bit just knee jerk. Yeah. 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 Hang in there, you know. yeah. <laughs> See how it works the, out. Give the band some time <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> Give yourself a minute. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, fuck it. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a great story, man. That's fucking That weird. is Absolutely. devastating. Did McCartney see her and you argue? I guess he had seen the, he, something happen. He saw, he saw oh, the slander. He had just walked cool. in the room. Because cool. I remember seeing him over the shoulder and everything. I was like, fuck. Does right. he grab the free shit too, Paul McCartney? He was wandering around with people. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, there was a whole lot of, like, I'm, I'll tell you who was grabbing stuff left, right, and center. Jermaine Jackson's got some fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine Jackson's cashing in. I, I'm not very yeah. famous now. I, I can't do... The band can't rejoin. He's yeah, just grabbing so he's just shit. shit. <laughs> hey, he had jeans for everyone, Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> God damn. And you know what's fucked up? You know how much shit Paul McCartney has seen over the years? Yeah. That he probably never said that's not cool? Yeah, yeah. He just saw it and accepted it. But, but you, is, you... You... What, what you were doing wasn't cool. <laughs> he has seen shit cool. that has been so uncool. <laughs> seen John Lennon <laughs> yeah. beat Cynthia yes. Lennon up and never and, said not cool and then reject his child and not visit it for fucking seven years <laughs> and all you can write is hey Jude in response <laughs> fuck off McCartney that's funny <laughs> speaking of hey Jude there's a good part in the documentary too where he talks about um, kind of how they would be in the studio and getting these little tiffs about uh, the, the music yeah and when he came up with hey Jude uh, that was Paul McCartney came up with that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he came up with it, uh, George wanted to put this little riff in between every line. So he'd go like, hey, Jude, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 Jeez, I'm glad George is dead now. <laughs> exactly. Apparently his fucking head was sloshing around <laughs> even then. I, I hear bad ideas like that can give you cancer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fucking he had, beer stein head. He had Worst a idea ever. He said, and you listen to Hey Jude and realize those rests between the vocals sure. are, are great. It makes it a dynamic song. And, and it's so distracting to put this little blues riff in between everything. And Paul had to tell him. And at that point, they were so, like, snippy with each other that George just kind of was like, well, whatever, like, fuck you All pretty pissed much. Off. Yeah, yeah. Pissed off. And then it turns out to be fucking Hey Jude, so shut up. Yeah. I, I was playing gla the Glastonbury Music Festival, which is the biggest one in Europe. And I was headlining the comedy tent, which is like, you're going on the last act, and I, which is normally a real good spot. Except when I was doing it, the main stage is being headlined by Paul McCartney. So I was only getting those douche... You know those uh, people who are like, I hate the Beatles. Like, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, fuck that right? shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so, overrated. So like, everyone, <laughs> everyone else had thousands of people come to the comedy tent, and I had like fucking 20 cunts. If, <laughs> if, if they just left, right? And I'm just... And all I can hear over the valley, over these fields is... No, 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 no. 200,000 people. I'm like, I'm like, can you fucking leave? <laughs> I don't want to be here. I'm trying to do as worst a gig as I can. It's like you're competing with that <laughs> over the hill. <laughs>
chicken. Yeah, that there. fucking gets people going. Man. Oh, Fuck. that shit. I love McCartney. We saw him at the Apollo. He was amazing. It was, amazing. That was, it was amazing. Best concert I've ever seen. No fucking, there was not one song that you're like, oh, he can't do that anymore. He does 22 Beatles songs and like fucking 10 um, Wings wing songs. And then you walk away going, oh, fuck, you didn't do that song. Yeah, like, yeah, and there's still songs that you're like, oh, I wish I would have heard him do that. Yeah. And it's all killer, man. Oh, yeah, drummer, yeah. I love his drummer, too. His drummer's, like, really weird-looking and animated, but he's, yeah. the guy he has on drums is fucking great. Yeah. His band he, is great. He got a great band behind him, and, and just to hear him sing those songs and have it sound just like it did. I mean, the guy's voice is amazing. Well, it was interesting that the, the tour that he did, I think we're talking about the same tour, but he mentions on stage that it's like uh, some of the songs had never been sung live. Like oh, because right. the yep, Beatles yep. stopped touring in '66. Yeah, they weren't alive. And then, and then, so everything else was just recorded from from Sergeant Pepper's on. It was all just all albums, no, no, never, never done live. Wow, man! And yeah. so he had songs that he was like, "Yeah, I'll give this song a go live." <laughs> yeah, let me give it a Never tried it before. It yeah. Yeah. How weird is that? <laughs> was, yeah, cover what? bands were doing songs that they had never done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Fucked up. I was watching uh, old McCartney clips recently on YouTube. I was looking up. Uh, I've just seen a face to see it live. I just mm. like that song. And I was, he was doing it with Wings in, like, 75. Wow. And I'm like, even in 75, this was, like, one of the good old... This was, like, a classic in 75. Yeah, like yeah. He was, This was a 10- or 15-year-old song in 75. That's how fucking long his career when, when you, when you When you watch the documentary and see some of those early pictures from Liverpool, you, you realize how fucking long ago they started that yeah, band yeah, yeah. And, and how long... They're, and they're still being played, relevant, the, they, everyone well, knows this song. Paul's still performing the song. Still performing yeah, it. yeah. It, it, That's it's, what was so fucked up when we saw him. It started with the Beatles, and here's the guy doing his thing. Yeah, doing wasn't, it. Wasn't That's it why great it that so he did them, to too? Watch like, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He didn't avoid the Beatles songs and just no, do shit no. off his new album? Like, no, no, yeah, he yeah. knows what people want. That, that's the amazing thing about seeing somebody like that, and not even somebody like that, him, because, you know, there, there, there's really nobody else like that from a band that was that legendary that's still doing it, mm -hmm. you, you know, because you remember being a kid listening to these songs, and now you're watching the guy the actually guy. do it. It wasn't just like you were going to a show and watching a band that you liked. It was right. a, it, There was something extra uh, to did, seeing him do that. Did he do that bit where he sang something on a ukulele? No, if he would brought well, the ukulele, I, I'd the have ukulele. rushed the stage no, and punched no, him in the fucking face. He did the one song, but you should know, because <laughs> George Harrison was a huge fan of the ukulele. Yes. And was like, I'm a fan... How could you ever be a human? As, 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 as a little montage. <laughs> as Rabbi a little, Shankar uh, told me the sitar. <laughs> as a little thing to George that year that George died, he played the ukulele to something. That was the only time he ever covered a George Harrison song. It was very, really? It was very sweet. And he oh, what did he I, close I with? That. He closed he with a Lennon song, too. Uh, uh, what was the... Uh, sometimes I give peace a chance at the end. That might have been... Because everyone mm -hmm. keeps singing. They did it at Liverpool, and then there was just end, like, yeah. can you stop singing that lyric over and over again? <laughs> it passed our curfew, and, like, Paul had driven home, and all the... <laughs> it's still going. All yeah. we are saying. <laughs> they never wrapped that song up, did they? Yeah, no. <laughs> they just sang it until the fucking lights went off. <laughs> it's a great way to get the guys out of the venue uh, to avoid the traffic. But hey, if, you, if you've ever been to Liverpool, you know, give peace a chance while you're being fucking pickpocketed the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so he closed with that? Yeah, uh, that's we, a nice it, tribute to Lennon. He did, yeah. I think he did yeah, that for yeah. us. Pretty cool. I, believe, I, I think it was a Lennon song that he closed the we Apollo. We saw with. Paul McCartney in, where was it again? The fucking Apollo. The Apollo, Apollo. Theater. With just, uh, yeah. uh, the whole place was filled with celebrities. Yeah, and yeah, us. Yeah. And us. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. Man. Couple couple stones in the audience. Dude, you don't. And Paul McCartney could care. I got a less. I got. I, I got couldn't a, care less. This whatever. story isn't my story. This is a friend. That, I, so I won't say who this happened to. But okay. a, a friend of mine, he um he got booked to do Ronnie Wood's daughter's wedding. Oh shit! Right, and mm -hmm. uh, just like some comedian. Like, yeah, comic. Yeah, British a British comic got yeah booked to do it. And he goes along to the wedding, and he'd been telling me he's like fucking Ronnie Woods wants me to do his daughter's wedding. It's like the daughter seemed to like him. He's off the TV a little bit. This guy. <laughs> Anyway, so he goes along to do the gig, and then uh, they go, "Well, do you want to go on before the 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 meal?" He goes, "No, I'll go. I'll go on art before the speeches." He goes, "No, I'll go on after the the speeches, right?" And I'm I'm not going to be a comic before the speeches. I'll, at the end of everything, right? Yeah. And they go, "All right, whatever." So he gets up there, and Ronnie Wood goes, "Yeah, just um to my daughter, you know um." And the Stones want to play a little song. So the fucking Stones oh, no, come up, <laughs> they play a little song during the speeches. And then fucking Bowie comes up and goes, yeah, I'd like to play a song for everyone. And Clapton starts accompanying Bowie. <laughs> 
right? And my mate's sitting there going, oh, for fuck's sake. I've got to follow this shit, right? <laughs> and he reckons, he reckons they all kept on drinking and he kept on getting himself bumped back further and further and further. Oh. Oh. Later on in the night, he goes up, he, he sees Ronnie Woods and he's shitting himself and he goes up to say, look, Ronnie, when do you want me to do this, right? And then Ronnie's all wasted and goes, you were great, mate. Yeah, you were great. Holy oh. shit. Oh. <laughs> fucking hightail out of there. You know, you as well. you never did point. it. Like, the thing is, he saw a Stones fucking Bowie and Clapton concert. Super group. Couldn't enjoy himself because no, he was just shitting just... himself the whole so time. So he should have went on before the speeches. Yeah, exactly. That's very funny. <laughs> the fucking Stones. That's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is that picture? I see Ringo and fucking Paul. Uh, <laughs> this was... <laughs> This was for the David Lynch Foundation, apparently. It was back in 2009. Wow. But yeah, yeah. Paul and Ringo playing a song together. They did a very funny cool. sketch for Comic Relief in Britain last year where they were talking about what celebrity to send out to Africa. Uh -oh. They always go, you've got to send someone out to Africa. And they were like, you can't cry. You're too fat. <laughs> But so they went to these celebrities. And in the end, the big kicker for the joke was Paul McCartney going, I should go. I'm the, you know, a knight of the realm, a thing. I'm the last living beetle. And then they just cut the Ringo's face going, what? <laughs> <laughs> Very good, man. We were, uh, we were also, and that, that came from a discussion we had during the last commercial break. Oh, God, yeah. But, but also, uh, we were, uh, me and Jim Jeffries we uh, got into a discussion for two seconds. For two and then seconds. I just said, no, we got to fucking save this for the, for the air. Uh, I, I, we were talking about, Coming inside of a girl. I'm anti. You're pro. I am pro. <laughs> pro load shooting inside. No. Uh, and you, you all of a sudden came out of nowhere and made a face like, yeah. Uh, how not, did you want to do that? It's not just the getting them pregnant bit, right? No, no, uh, no. Because no. I, you know, I just like coming on a girl's face. There's something about that that I enjoy. But it, look, but I'm it, not saying that's awful. Yeah, but uh, even <laughs> apart from that, I don't like the sensation of just the shit. And then you you pull out, and there's that blob that goes, <laughs> and, and how the the girl dismounts with such coarseness, like just just like caution, like she gets off like ah. <laughs> But, but when you pull out, it's just lay still, I'll get you a towel. This is a different emotion altogether. Just don't move your head. Just try to keep it backwards. But, and it's also like I, I assume that after I've come, they haven't come. So I, I go down and finish him off sometimes with my tongue oh, straight away. Eat the pussy okay. first, though. Eat it first. No, I eat it first and after. Make her come first. See, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about that. Make her come first. <laughs> I, your job is, is up. Then you can enjoy yeah, this is, this is it. This is my coming finger. I can't make it with my left hand, but I can with my right hand. <laughs> and this finger's got terrible psoriasis on the moment. So, so I, I can't make anyone come at the present. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you gotta get you got to get your fucking mug down there and, uh, and do some work. you got to put your work in. Yeah. Before you can uh, uh, gain the pleasure, and then you know, like, all right, now I can en enjoy myself because she, uh, you know, you like him to come herself. first. You eat the box, and make him come, and then you could fucking blow. And then the them. inside. Well, evidently, coming. I'm just an insensitive lover. But but the, you, the sensation of oh. now, fuck after you come. I'm talking about no, be I, right I, before and during the yeah. feeling of of the inside shoot. Unless I can see it, I don't believe I've done it. <laughs> is, that, is that it? I think there's You're an element of that. Based. You know what? I, I, I've got, I, I'll tell you something about me. I haven't got a great <laughs> cock. I haven't, I haven't got a, I'm not a good fuck, but I do shoot a mighty load. <laughs> like, like distance and size. Yeah, you and, got a good, I've got, I, good I, batch. several times I've masturbated on my back and fucking swished it straight into my mouth from like, from a distance <laughs> and like shocked myself like, fuck. It's kind of, um, my headboard's uh, just covered in cum. <laughs> <laughs> Jim makes a great point though because I I could equate it to like smoke. You ever smoke in the dark and you, you're not quite sure if you're actually smoking because you can't see the smoke. <laughs> so it's like fuck it. I don't. I might as well flick the cigarette because I don't even feel like I'm smoking. <laughs> it's kind of the same way because when I'm when I leave everything inside, it's just like well now I don't know 
Well, how how gr how good of a load that was. But it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, but fuck how good of a load <laughs> yeah. it was. It just feels better when you, you're getting the sensation the entire time all through the orgasm. It feels better in a nice wet place of instead course. of your dumb fucking hand that you could just do anywhere. No, that's I, like I, fucking not eating steak. You're like, oh no, I'm gonna have to do the dishes. Who gives a shit? <laughs> I, I, no, I'm a I'm a pull out straight into their mouth sort of thing. I I, I and I don't trust women. I don't. I think they don't look. I don't take my Propecia every day, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know if they're going to fucking take their pill every day. I don't trust them, man. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of the crapshoot that goes along with it. And also, ladies, if you're out there, that fucking one that you put in, inside your cunt, it's like a little plastic clip. Oh, yeah, you yeah. I hate those. You can feel that You can shit. feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not hidden. You can feel that. It's like get, hanging out down from the cervix or something. Yeah, I got a graze off that. I, I feel it, yeah. It's like a pinch. You're like, well, what the fuck is in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like alien. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Teeth it's there. everything you're afraid of with a vagina. Yeah, <laughs> something yeah. hurtful inside. You're, yeah, you're you're pretty much. You're, you're, it's a very face uh, faith based thing to put your dick into somewhere you don't know what's in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, you like putting it into a dark spot. And going all right, uh, and then you feel something pinch you. You're like, eh. that, it's that, that little thing. Yeah, that that thing that clips in and. What the fuck that is? is that it looks what it like looks a like? looks like a hood latch from yeah. a Mustang. Oh, yeah. And it's got those yeah, it's Ew. got those little things that come out the side and, and women think they're undetectable. That's bullshit. No, you, you can feel you that. bash into them. Jesus. You bash into Where's it. those rings? You ever you ever come across oh, the those? Fucking, uh, uh, yeah, they pop some ring up there. I don't go for that. Just fucking stay natural, and I will eventually pull out, even though I don't like to. I, I will. just like a good Doc Martin to the lower abdomen. I'm, <laughs> that I, usually I, I takes care of any problem. I don't have, I don't have pre cum. I've never had pre cum. I, there was so much fucking hype about pre cum when I was younger. Yeah. Remember when they were saying, "Don't even put your cock in because you, you, people say you can pull out, but there's going to be pre cum, and that yeah. can get the girl pregnant." Yeah. I don't. What I is leak this a lot. I secrete a lot. Do you? A lot of pre cum. Jimmy's a secretor. I am a lot of pre cum. Do you have wet dreams? No. I've had one in my life. I know, because you dry jerk yeah, off a lot. I've morning. had like mm -hmm. two. You gotta let that sperm build up. They're so the great. They're, no, it, they're was, it was amazing. It was fucking great. It's ridiculous. Your dre yeah. dreamy orgasm, first of all, is really good. And then you're actually coming. But then when you wake up, it's just it's like, a uh, disaster. Yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we have that? One time I did have my flannel pajama pants on. I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, all matted <laughs> against me. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? Do we, do we have that uh, a clip about with that retarded kid? Uh, uh, that had the wet dream. Oh fuck! I forgot and the, about and that. And the guy's got to come in and explain it. It That's, is classic. It's hilarious. That dumb fucking. <laughs> that dummy fucking shoots his load in bed. And how, how do you? <laughs> how do you not have a kid? Uh, with all the coming you're doing inside. I women. fucking don't jinx me like the fucking tigers. That's, yeah, he might be. I, I think. I, I think I can't that? do it. Are you I worried can, about that shit? Worry. I, I'm worried. Uh, no. I'm I, worried. I can't make him. No, I you don't give a shit. Make him at I, this would point? Be, I would yeah. love to be told that uh, my sperm are fucking, you know, tailless or something. Uh, but, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, I was I told the story when, when I was married. My wife wanted uh, to have a baby, yeah. and I I can only thank Jesus Christ that that never happened. Sure. But she, she was like actively trying, so she'd be like, "I'm ovulating. Let's you know have have a kid." Mm. So I would fake that I came. Ah. I would fucking uh, 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 <laughs> fake, Jeez. and then go and jack off in the fucking bathroom <laughs> because I didn't want. I did not want to have a kid. She with this had to bitch. know though. No, no. Now they can't tell. You fucking uh, leaking out cum in their dumb wet vagina. They don't know. Yeah, the yeah. vagina's all soaked. You fucking yeah. you you go down on her at first and fucking spit a hawk a loogie in there. <laughs> yeah, they don't know. Uh, I, I remember wet. What, everything's just wet. It's like dumping water in stew. I have no <laughs> idea what's happening. <laughs> Whatever. I lost my virginity and I was wearing a condom at the time because you know that's what you do when you're young. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the only times I used to wear a condom was when I was like 17 and yeah, 18, yeah. fucking people that definitely didn't have AIDS. <laughs> Yeah. As, I, as I get older and I'm moving into a more agey field of my life. Yeah, my fucking... easy, and more agey field, yeah. 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 But I wore a condom and then I, afterwards, because of my first time, I said to her, I said, you, you felt the cum shoot out, didn't you? And she's like, sure did. Yeah, felt yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny's laughing. I think he found the clip. All right. Oh, I God. This is, this is Sex Education for Trainables. It's from 1975, I think. 
Uh, it looks it looks earlier. And you know what a trainable is, right, Jim Jeffries? No. A trainable, uh, back then, they called them trainables. The retardation it's, isn't too bad. It's a retard. Oh, you can train them. That you they assume. Train them. Yeah, they, they called them trainables. Could be rotated <laughs> back into society. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great word. They should bring that back. Trainable. Trainables. It's like, like I'm capable. Is that, that one's trainable. That's 18 or 20 <laughs> incantations of what to call them before now. Yeah. Because that would never wash right now. <laughs> trainable. Yeah, it's a trainable. <laughs> <laughs> we called him yes. before that. He was called a fucking animal. Yeah. And uh, that yeah. was politically correct. It went trainable, then thing with feet. <laughs> <laughs> Old giant tongue. It's, it's a good way of marking out evolution. Yeah. See uh, what words they use for uh, retarded people. And now retarded isn't even good. Why is there so many dislikes on this video? This is a classic video. Oh, come right, on. You, what you think? That's every why, parent. Why, yeah, why, why, why do you come think? Come on, man. Yeah. yeah what? One like and one dislike. Oh, is that what <laughs> I just see the bars from this the uh, dis distance. The dislike. Likes are everybody that Why had is there to only do this. 40 <laughs> views? Why is there only 40 views? This, this is, is probably on the internet 30,000 times over. Ah, yeah. so this is one of the yeah, one of the corners that are barely posted. poked at. All right, let's. Uh, I, I want to hear this. I think that there's been a there's a couple different of the trainable like jerking off clips. So I, off I, I, clips? this is one of them. I don't know if yeah. it's the exact one you're talking about, but we'll see. Yeah. Hey Frank, no, how come you haven't gotten up yet? I'm waiting, sticky. Oh, <laughs> what, uh, when did that happen? Did it happen during the night? Or did it just happen now? Do you know? Um, no. Can you well, pause that? Because fucking Frank looks like Big A. It's really creepy. <laughs> <me. laughs> he does. But, but, but smarter. <laughs> I assume he's always wet and sticky. Just movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, they tend to just be wet and yeah. sticky. And, the, uh, the and adult, I'm unwashed. The adult seems to be enjoying this a little too much. Oh, though. yeah. Well, let me lick that off for you. <laughs> yeah. Does he look like the fucking like like the uh, the, the guy who's about to be bitten in every silent Dracula film? <laughs> and, the yes. fucking retard. And has, comes in. and has the tard requested that everything in his house be a light brown? <laughs> yeah, like, no color. Picture. That's because he shits on everything. They just, <laughs> <laughs> he had a white rug and he realized quickly that was an error. <laughs> that stupid oh, picture funny. hanging up. Might Kevin as well from, make clean up easy. Yeah, he's got a picture on his wall of a candle and a uh, jug. Yeah. Kevin from Connecticut's going nuts for retard. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'll bet you that great. picture's hanging up. They said, could you uh, could you paint a picture of things you've murdered people with? <laughs> 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 he's, trying to, he's trying to paint a hammer for the next installation. <laughs> things that are smarter than you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a bolt. <laughs> yeah, a potted plant and a fucking hat. <laughs> Nice come in the pants, dumbbell. <laughs> dumbbell. <laughs> Holy shit. You remember what I said about our next guest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, crap. All right, let's, uh, let's go through this. Well, if you're sticky, maybe it was a wet dream. You know what a wet dream is? Who brought the music in? McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's yeah. at the door going, not cool. <laughs> Retart me. <laughs> it was a wet dream. What were you thinking of? My career hadn't gone good since the Beatles. I did a lot of training ball videos. <laughs> And then the retard has to tell him that he was dreaming about stepping on a kitten's head. Yeah. <laughs> <And> that, <laughs> they, they didn't tell you that the retard's Mark Chapman. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Fuck yeah. There you go. Nice. I guess it's disgusting. It's no, it disgusting. It's disgusting. It. Yeah. I guess it was a little too graphic. Yeah. Now, I can say, you know how to keep a secret. Oh, good. Stan Lee is helping him. <laughs> there is no scolding or recrimination. No. The boy is not frightened. Jesus, he looks like Berkowitz. No oh, God, he does. He does, man. Frank, I'm sure you understand now just what happened. Or Andy Kaufman and, uh, after a bad gig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the Philippines to get cancer treatment. <laughs> 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 We have nine minutes, minutes of this. <laughs> I know, right? Show you how to clean it up. Uh, Jesus. Okay. Clean it up. That's okay. Great. Now clean it up! <laughs> yeah. oh, now the old, all the old bands going to help him. Oh, he's getting him <laughs> up. Yeah. Trying trying to get you should hand him a cactus. <laughs> Here, clean it with this. Yeah, <laughs> 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 well, plug in an iron here. <laughs> you have to rub this over the dirty area. <laughs> Stoop. Or your mommy will die. <laughs> 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 he freaks out. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, this guy's the greatest. Oh, look at that awful painting. No, everything's, everything's a lot brown. Those are the one of the things Hitler would paint. You ever see Hitler's art? <laughs> yes. Hitler's oh, art yeah. was almost good. Yeah. Hitler's art looked like he, could do, he did everything with rulers. There was, <laughs> there was no curvature in something. No. There was, if it was a rainbow, it would have been a box. <laughs> Hence the swastika. Oh, yeah. No yeah, real curves. The swastika, yeah. yeah, a lot of uh, right angles. <laughs> yeah, originally it was meant to be an infinity symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear what Ty Johnson has to say. <laughs> One that everyone dreads uh, or is embarrassed by yeah. or tries to avoid completely. A meeting with management? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like Karloff. <laughs> or sex oh. or screwing or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Rape? <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Hmm? These are the females. Down on her back? Yes. Okay. And the man's lying down on top Who of her. Who the fuck is going to fuck yeah, these right? two? Oh, <laughs> well. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, some of the girls yeah, I've been with, right? <laughs> not as smart. <laughs> he points that. If, I wish these the audience dummies. could see the fucking, the, just the heads turning, looking away from the chart. They have no idea what she's talking about. No clue. They're these, sitting on an awful fucking, like, light green they're, they're shag not carpet. One of yeah. them looks like Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> And this one looks like Shirley Feeney on the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the one's wearing a skirt with a black, uh, or, uh, yeah, black stockings uh, yeah. and little fucking patent leather shoes. She's asking for it. She looks know. like Shirley. Yeah, she yeah. does. What happened? I don't know. He sang rags to riches and then fucking <laughs> fed me paint chips. <laughs> uh, let's hear her describe sex. Oh, penis gets hard. Oh, see? Oof. Yeah. Okay, it gets hard and it sticks out from its It's body. hard like math. And that's <laughs> 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 fucking dunce. <laughs> and it sticks out like you do in a family photo. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> into the hole that the lady has between her legs. Uh -oh. Oh. oh, shit. Okay? Now, see? That's what he's doing. He's putting the penis into the hole between her legs. Oh, 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 she looks like oh, Shane McGowan. Normalization. <laughs> <laughs> Shane McGowan. <laughs> She's wincing. If the retardate can understand... The retardate? The retardate? The retardate? I, I no, that's the, what they say the, when some I, food disappears on Iraq's desk. <laughs> I thought that was a retarded boy band. <laughs> the retarded. Kate plus retarded. <laughs> the retarded. It's, it's a Mexican retard. Yeah. <laughs> Holy the shit. This could include related responsibilities, yeah. such as appropriate times and places, mm. and the purpose of birth control. Oh, boy. Many people really? believe yeah, that, that face important work? elements <laughs> of sex education are social behavior and responsibilities. Nice time. Social acceptability involves being comfortable with one's own sexuality. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy, is that not a smart Oh shit, he's jerking off. Oh. That's a child. We're watching a child jerk, is it? Yeah, that is, it's a fucking oh, child. Wow, That's he's tussleable. Jesus. Oh no. Someone's gonna walk Someone's in. walking in. Too dumb to remember to lock the yeah. door. Uncle Paul. <laughs> Tell him out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh oh. 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 Oh, she oh, he's covering. Oh, oh, oh. Excuse me, Ricky. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Ricky, I did see what you were doing. Uh, it felt good, didn't it? Martin. Jesus! Yeah, Martin. Martin. We, we all have feelings like this. Uh, yeah, when, hold on. My, when my mother caught me doing that, she said I was disgusting. Yeah. Right? And then she went and told my eldest brother, <laughs> and my eldest brother came in the room and said, Geez, I hope we don't have to move or anything. I'll keep it secret, but I don't know how long for. Why, well, guys, the only person ever did. And then, like, years, years later, I bring it up at Christmas, and they're like, oh, that was killer. Oh. <laughs> what guilt thing for it, my, my mother came and grabbed the duvet, and I was holding on to This is 300 pounds of misery, my mum, right? She's bending oh, right. right She's back. a big girl, right? And then I had one choice because I was naked. It was the middle of the day, right? Fucking... 110 degrees of Australian heat, like in your measurement, right? Yeah. I'm sitting under my bed having a wake. My mum walks in the room. I throw the magazine down the side of the bed in one motion. just, And she goes, clean this fucking room up. And, I, and she goes, why are you laying in your bed? I went, you know, just 
Having a nap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and having a nap. And she just goes, well, get up now. And she goes, why aren't you getting up? I said, I will get up. Can you get the fuck out? She starts pulling on my duvet. Oh, my shit. erection strengthens. No, she, <laughs> <laughs> she, she's pulling on my duvet. I'm panicking like, oh, fuck. And I'm going, please, mum. Please, mum, no. Oh, but I had no. to make a decision, right? She's a big woman. I had to make a decision. I let go of the duvet. <laughs> She goes flying backwards into the cupboard, and I flip onto my stomach as uh, quick as possible. Gave you a little time. Yeah, so I've still got this sweaty, fucking bald ass sticking up, <laughs> and a 300-pound mum crying and falling <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Things couldn't have gone worse. <laughs> anyway, enough about me. Back to the retards. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh. I'm just glad you're doing this in the privacy of your own room. Right. Well, Instead of on the highway like last time. time. <laughs> what about these feelings? and what causes them and how we can control uh, could you feelings. fucking leave and yeah, let me yeah. finish i'm sorry i intruded on your privacy i'll be sure to knock next time yeah. okay yeah, right. she sounds like yeah. sam's mom that's yeah. how sam's mom oh, would do absolutely. it absolutely <laughs> right this manner of response frees no emotion the by that lady not a kid he's and like assures him he is normal it opens communication between parent and child and introduces the no, concept it creeps of responsibility you out. for his behavior. I was just staring at the door where it was. Yeah. I'm going to ring my nephew and tell him. of his mom. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, no, no. Here we go. Back to the table of them. Okay. What are you making? A rabbit. Oh, shit, nice. my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you, you really no income you forever. What are you making? Oh, Can you tell me what you're making? One, two. A nuisance of yourself? Oh, that's <laughs> funny. She's hey, fucking diddling her pussy under, under the, the table. table. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how, how she's finger painting. <laughs> she's got a period. I don't remember, I don't remember giving them red paint. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking uh, she was diddling herself. Now the teacher's got to come over. Stop and finish your picture, okay? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch right? the fucking crayons with those salty oh, fingers. Oh, man. Oof. Jesus. Oh, now that retard's got a hanger hang for a fish sticks. <laughs> Why is there some crayons missing? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to make another one? Yeah. If a trainable does not respond to verbal admonition Hit for masturbating yes. in front of others, she walks with a cow prod. from the group. <laughs> this she is can't repeated stop. as many times as necessary until she realizes God. this is not. This is like reverse slavery. <laughs> it really is. If they cannot be made to understand through this, what if she just walk around the room and into an elevator shaft? <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the trainable is being walked out of the room yeah, by yeah. Jackie Brown, <laughs> and uh, yeah, right into an elevator. <laughs> Just a rolled up newspaper. Uh, yeah, 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 on the nose, yeah, on the like snout. Dog. Get out of it! Yeah, stop it! Uh oh. Oh fuck! Uh -oh. oh Danny! Oh, fuck. oh Danny! Oh, fuck. We, we when know. the person in charge of the YouTube <laughs> yeah. rewinds it too far, yes, while eating an energy bar, <laughs> <laughs> smash his face with your cocks collectively. Everybody's drawing a nice picture. Oh, she's still playing with her cunt. Yeah, you your picture, okay? Right. All right? Now she's a bit further on, they walk yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, she fucking, uh... She can't deal. She's got to grab that well, fucking disgusting not pussy. acceptable social behavior. Yeah. Uh. If they cannot be made to understand through this... What, you got to put them in another they home? They need special help. <laughs> uh, special help. Is there a home inside the home? going out to lunch. Oh. What are you going to have for lunch, Joe? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. This is my old friend, Billy. This is my sister. Oh, great. Two of them. Two jerk off fucking... ...used to teach trainable social skills. Here, two people are learning how to greet each other. Oh, the like dogs are just sniffing each other's <laughs> assholes. Yeah. He's hitting you with a tennis racket across the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh boy, does he look dumb. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking murderer he looks like. What an accidental murderer. <laughs> His old luck guy. Oh, oh, retarded Mary Hartman. <laughs> Mary Tartman, Mary Tartman. <laughs> touch our genitals together. Uh, what is this place called? The fucking, the building of shitty art? Is that one good painting? Oh, great, the urinal. Oh, no, the urinal. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no.
Jesus. Jimmy does this to me in the bathroom. There's two retards at the urinal, and yes. there's partitions between the urinals. One of them, out of nowhere, just reaches over and starts rubbing, rubbing the other guy's back. How many times have we looked at this? I, I know. Like, it's been a bunch of times. I don't ever remember the retard touching the other guy's no, back. No, I remember this. I do remember it in our bathroom, though, because Jimmy will <laughs> yeah. Jimmy will do this to you. There's a retard that looks like Billie Jean King touching another man's, <laughs> <laughs> touching another man's back. Is he Two wearing men. sunglasses or something? Yeah, he's really uh, creepy. Yeah, 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 that's so he could catch a glimpse yeah, of his yeah. cock. It's Roy Orbison. <laughs> <laughs> Just how the arm slowly goes yeah. through the urinal. It's so creepy. Jim Jones yeah, rubbing his back. You know he's definitely not congratulating <laughs> like it's obviously sexual. The speed's a sexual yeah. smell. His arm slowly too comes around mm. the uh, partition and like rubs his back. It's very disgusting. Where does this go? Where does this leave? How to recognize? I think the retard is the guy not touching. It's the other guy seducing him. <laughs> Trainables are particularly vulnerable. Oh, it because is because of common characteristics of trust, lack of judgment. And desire and they're big for effect. <laughs> These individuals must be trained and exposed to well-supervised. Well, no, no, I got the guy who's rubbing the, the, the back. I yeah. gotta ask you something. If you're yeah. in that bathroom, would you stop that or would you just leave? <laughs> I, would, I would watch it. <laughs> I got my phone out and just a video. <laughs> He's just rubbing the retarded guy's back. It's like, what are you gonna do with that fucking giant retarded hog? How do you oh, not just yeah. grab it? Come on. But isn't Go he, for it. Isn't he embarrassed by the guy on the left no. still being there? He's no, no. off. He's got a long trench coat on. He's loving this. Yeah, that's his pal. This is an awful bathroom. Room. Yeah, <laughs> it's serious XM yeah, bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> He's trying yeah. to avoid a meeting with management. <laughs> it's fucking Gary's rubbing his back. Like, come on, we just want to talk to you. And Bladder's making a weird, like, jughead face. And, and, these and these guys come, like, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> They come down to the bathroom in the home yeah. the same time every day. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Because yeah. that guy is the fucking um, Eric Bloom from Blois. <laughs> He's rubbing the guy's back. <laughs> Uh, he's not retarded, though. The the guy that uh, is That's getting retarded is retarded. Yeah. You don't he's want, taking advantage you of the retard. You don't want any of that tard on tard crime. No. Yeah. <laughs> the trainable is very trusting. Yes, yes. So yes. He, he takes the back rubbing as encouragement. Of course. <laughs> oh, my God. Now the trainable has become the teacher. And he's fucking <laughs> eating the urinal cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He really, his pants are probably pulled up the whole time. That's the beauty of this. He's actually scooping cereal out and eating it. The guy's rubbing his back like he's stupid. You know, you, this is wrong. This is a buffet. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the, he just turned around and shit into the urinal. He has no idea. And he's poking his fingers in it. And the guy's rubbing his back like, cut the malarkey, bub. Yeah. It's, a, it's all right. We've all been there. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Is someone going to help this talk? Is this guy watching the video from... Oh, hold on really fast. Uh, Brian Stone Quincy writes, Congrats, you just had your back rubbed by Judah Freelander. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's, that is true. I yeah. guess he found the video at yeah, home. He's wearing a hat that says world champion dunk. <laughs> You ever, you ever rubbed the retard? <laughs> I rubbed 12. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, fuck. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, his shoulders. Oh. Oh, it's yeah. great. It's like a Tarantino film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, he was in a fucking porn store. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Old school peep show, huh? This is good. 25 cents magazines. I miss those places. Like the whistling's really... Yeah, this is Midnight Cowboy. The guy's oh, going to blow God. John Voight in a movie theater. <laughs> John Voight. They're, uh... I, all it is is a... Can you teach oh, a priest. A priest. Now, this or is sexual good. morality to a trainable... No, uh, no, I can't teach them. There's always the chance that they'll get in trouble, and they can be arrested. Ooh, oh. Teachers should not thrust their own moral values oh, on their thrust? students. But it's going somewhere else. There are too many conflicting moral systems today. Yeah. Mm. This is the responsibility of the family, if mm. available. Mm. However, to dispose of the you hear that? All to yeah. Yeah. You heard that right? If available, you know, yeah. available, yeah. Of sexual ditched behavior. And, mm. No one should use the body of an unwilling partner for their own pleasure. Says what? You. Unprotected and unplanned. How things have changed. Supposed to get laid. Is wrong, and no one needs to allow a doofy in their drink. <laughs> if they do not want them to. We may not always succeed in reaching the trainable. The trainable. We must always try. Yeah. Oh, God. Now it's a montage of retards with horrible haircuts. Yeah. These are all people who go into Rosemary's Baby's fucking shower. 1972 video. Yeah. Like that retard looks like she's staring into the sun the whole time. What's wrong with Stop you? squinting, madam. Jeez. Oh, 
for those big dumb ears. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just hearing everything and understanding nothing. Yeah. What a waste of ears. They really are. They're like two fucking giant empty bowls. <laughs> just waiting for a delicious treat to be put in them. I, they just go dramatized sequences. They used real retards, though, didn't they? These oh, they are, did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who wants to put this on their fucking the IMDb? Days, this yeah. isn't like Sean Penn. <laughs> IMDb, no. I am dumbbell. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah, nowadays you couldn't use a real uh, uh, retard. Oh, you, you, no, you could for a video like that, you could. Yeah, but they wouldn't even make it. Do they even make oh, these they still videos make retards. anymore? <laughs> no, they still make retards. <laughs> Obviously, walk the halls around here. <laughs> they, uh, but they, they don't make these films anymore, I don't think. No, I, I love these films, man. The old school ones, we've watched so many of those. The the one with the homosexual is out there. Russell Protect Brand had a show in Britain that, that's just what the show was. It was like really? Tosh.0, oh, instead of stuff of the internet, old, old videos, like old yeah. holiday things, old warning stuff. I love that shit, I love man. all that stuff, yeah. It's such a great... Um, I, lo I love the, on the, the, the marijuana ones where it's just like some guy that just... He was so stoned, he just ate a glass. <laughs> yeah. And now his mouth's all cut up. Is that what you want to have happen to you? And no one ever, like, bought weed and smoked it on their own. They were always given it uh, and, and freaked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they never just, oh, like, This, hey, this is the thing is with drug pushers. My mum always says, watch out for the pushers. A pusher, yeah. What they do is they give you a little bit, and then you're hooked. I remember when I used to take coke, I could never get the guy to fucking come around. <laughs> no. Where's the <laughs> pusher with the to, free shit when you I need him? I used to ring him for days going, <laughs> drug dealers are the, are the fucking... The worst organized people, <laughs> least reliable folk in the world. Yes. They're, they're not motivated enough to get you hooked. Uh, they sure not giving drug, out any drug samples dealers, either. They don't know how clocks work, drug dealers. No. You know when they do that one where they're like, all right, I'll be over in 20 minutes. And then you like, you go minutes. to your friend, you go, where's this drug dealer? And they go, oh, he said he's coming from fucking, they mentioned like some <laughs> town. And you go, that's fucking four hours away. What are you <laughs> yeah, talking yeah. about? Yeah. Oh, Reefer Madness is one of the classic old uh, movies. Yes, they're purely fictional. Any similarity to actual occurrences is living a deceased person's is a coincidence, coincidentally. It may startle you, this motion picture, yes. Does this have no voiceover? Why couldn't someone actually read this to us? I know. Wow. And why is it shaking? And now the scroll is going by. Hey, yeah, this is where George Lucas uh, stole yeah. the idea for Star Wars. <laughs> not <quite. laughs> yeah, not quite the beginning of Star Wars. This is awful. Sufficiently emphasized the frightful toll of the new drug menace which is destroying the youth of America in alarmingly increasing numbers. The Mara empire is Warner. growing stronger. What is that? It's, uh, it's the drug. A violent narcotic. An unspeakable scourge, Gosh. the real public enemy number one. Its first effect is sudden, violent, uncontrollable laughter. Then comes dangerous hallucinations. Space expands, time slows down, almost stands still. Fixed ideas come next, conjuring up monstrous extravagances. Followed by emotional disturbances, the total inability to direct thoughts and loss of all power to resist physical emotions. Leading finally to acts of shocking violence, ending often in incurable insanity. In picturing its soul-destroying effects, no attempt was made to equivocate. The scenes and incidents, while fictionalized for the purpose of this story, are based upon actual research into the results of marijuana addiction. If their stark reality will make you think, we make you aware, we'll make you aware something must be done to wipe out this ghastly menace. When the picture will not... Uh, uh, how long is this? <laughs> Jesus, because the dread marijuana may be reaching forth next for your son or daughter or yours. Or yours! <laughs> <laughs> it was only five seconds long, Anthony. I know, Jesus Have Christ. you been smoking something? Yeah, Has your mind been still? altered? Ah, yes. Wacky tobacco. Ah. What is, is this eraser head? <laughs> this is fucking uh, Citizen Kane. The newspaper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They love the This is an hour and one minute long, this? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that'll madness. get us out of here. <laughs> 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 Let's just watch Reef for Madness yeah. the whole rest of the show. Fuck it. Yeah, they, 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 they were very scared of the, the weed back then. I think one chick turns into a complete whore uh, from smoking one joint in this. Fantastic. Uh, it was, it, yeah, tell your children. All right, finally. Okay. Jeez. You and all the school parent groups about the country... And you must stand united on this oh. and stamp out this frightful assassin of our youth. 
You can do it by bringing about compulsory education yeah. on the subject of narcotics in general. Is the parents the talking about parents? Marijuana in particular. The dread marijuana. That is the purpose of this meeting, ladies and gentlemen. What year is this? To lay the foundation 30s? for a nationwide really? campaign yeah, I think so. by you. I think, yeah, this has got to be. Such compulsory education. I like the ones from the 60s. Yeah, the 60s ones are great. When did Griffin Madness come out? You think it's the 50s? Yeah. No, this looks earlier than the 50s. Yeah, this guy looks like he hasn't heard of Hitler yet. Yeah. <laughs> now, this, they look like Little Rascals uh, extras. This guy be in the 30s. Some of the methods you yes. 1936 the is what I'm getting. Yeah. The work of the forces of law yes. Which yeah, they had no idea, like Hitler. Yeah. They're like, wow, that Hitler's doing a great job he over there in Germany. He's still on the cover of Time magazine. Oh, yeah, man of the year. I, I love, like, like when, when people just go, we just didn't know that Hitler was going to do anything. Yeah, um, not a clue. And like, even when you see his documentaries, like, I wanted to leave, but my father, like, like when you see the, the Holocaust one, yeah. there's some Jewish family going, my, my father said that nothing would happen and everything would be all right. <laughs> Didn't you see all the saluting and the standing in a square yelling the nasty comments? And yeah, all only, that? only one thing could come of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if you saw it now, you'd be like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't trust that group. You yeah, know, yeah, there's something the kind of shady. There. The Especially were since the there. Germans had already <laughs> fucked up 20 years <laughs> yeah, earlier. Yeah. Just 20 years earlier, they had done the same thing. And also, that they like, their, <laughs> like, like their figures were like skulls and eagles. It was like, what the fuck's wrong with these people? <laughs> it's interesting when you watch the Hindenburg come in too, because uh, it's a giant swastika on the tail. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it comes in, and everybody's like, you know, oh, oh, the tragedy, the tragedy. A few years later, it's like, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that... it is odd to see it's like and there it is the wonderful Hindenburg coming over to Lake House, New Jersey and it's just a giant swastika on the tail yeah yeah like I, I think it was something like three stories high or Wasn't something wasn't the swastika originally owned by the Hare Krishnas like it's a Hare Krishna sign. it's a peace sign very uh, a lot of a lot of uh, religions yeah. and uh, cultures right. had it and uh, one of one of them uh, was an Asian uh, society and it had it as a symbol of peace, and, but it was the other way around. It, it, it pointed. Um, uh, it always. Counterclockwise. It always just looks like it, like something that you put at the bottom of a cartoon character to make it look like it's running. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, yeah. Hitler turned it around and then and then tilted it. Uh, you know, gave it that little tilt. He was wonderful with design. You can say what you want. He had, he had a, he, I would have let him decorate great my eye. house. Great eye for Lovely design. Lovely color. The, blacks the outfits great. were amazing. He approved the Volkswagen Beetle, which yeah. which hippies drive ironically oh, like yeah. fucking to this day. Love them. He knew how to market. He knew how to market. And yeah, and, and, and that swastika was, uh, you know, before before it got tied to everything. I mean, who's going to deny it? Ain't a cool looking symbol. Yeah. I, I I told a story uh, a few years ago about how I I used to draw a swastika on. Remember the old sneakers, like the, the, the PF Flyers, would have the rubber tips on them? Right, yeah. Yeah, I, on, I used to draw swastikas on the front of those, not because I had any clue about what it represented, mm. just because it looked cool. And my teacher same once way, pulled That's me the same aside. reason that I wear stripy pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> my, my teacher pulled me aside and, and was like, what, what's that on your sneakers? And I went, I don't know. And she goes, do you know what that represents? And I went, I went no, because I didn't. And she tried to explain it to me, but I'm a kid. And I'm, I didn't fucking know. I just thought it looked cool in pen <laughs> to draw a swastika. <laughs> you yeah. still do. How did you know right. about it as a Synagogue kid? Synagogue door. How, 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 did you, how did you know about it as a kid? Like, did, like, you, just did watching, your father like, have a lot of them around the yeah, house? Yeah, they were all over the place. <laughs> I, watching shows like Hogan's Heroes and Combat. You just knew. Things like that. You just kind of knew. We all kind of just drew it growing up. Yeah, you, you drew it. It's kind of a cool thing to just kind of draw. What it really I meant. think we need another Hogan. Hogan's Hero sitcom for the modern day. I think we need like a, a whole lot of like a mash or something. A mash, uh, we, some, something we about Afghanistan or Iraq. About or Afghanistan, Iraq, and then like the bumb, the bumbling Al Qaeda outside <laughs> that are just like, ah, oh, come here, Akmel. Oh, don't you tell them that I'm drinking alcohol. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's... <laughs> Did you see Four Lions? <laughs> No. Chris Morris oh, directed. Yeah, that was great. great. You gotta see that. Suicide Jeffrey. Bombers. It's a comedy. It's great, and it was a British. No, I haven't seen it. You would really love great. it. You would love it. Four lines. Yes, you yeah. would love it. What was that noise? 
Was that the computer? Some kind of uh, volume coming out of something. Yeah. I, was, man, on my iPad, say. I was checking something out. Oh! I turned it off. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just I was wondering where it was. Yeah. Um, we should uh, we should break because we got uh, John Ratzenberger. Coming. Oh yeah. And we learned that Jim Jeffries knows everything about him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. A, I think it, I'm a bit of a fan. Yeah. He's an expert. Yeah. 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 That'd be cool. <laughs> we me, should, uh, me and my brother play a game called w w w Movies We Spot Cliffy in. When everyone films, <laughs> and so me and my brother sit there. And when like Superman two comes, like, yeah, yeah, Superman two, and there we go. <laughs> and he's in Superman one, and he's in Superman two, playing two different characters. Well, that's a bit of trivia. Yeah, yeah. He's he's that one like uh, in Superman one, in Superman two, when um, the, the the fucking the, the three people go up to the moon and they fuck up the moon landing. He's the one that goes. I think he said it's a girl that he saw. Like he's oh, the, that's him. He's right, the guy right. at Houston. Yeah. Yeah. When Zod. Yeah. Yeah. Zod. Uh, more with Jim Jeffries, who's playing the uh, Stress Factory this weekend. Stress Factory this weekend. Uh, tonight and tomorrow, right? Yep. And then Jimmy's going to be there in early November. November three, four, five. Yes. Yeah. So you can see both shows. Go see Jim this weekend, then wait a month and come back. Right on. Uh, Ratzenberger, John Ratzenberger, uh, joining the show in a few minutes. Stay there. Hi, who's this? My name is William, and I like to wear dresses. R. Yeah. yeah. E. Goodness gracious. T. Yeah. A. Oosh. R. D. <laughs> T. Retard. Retard. Yeah. Woo. B. Retarded. B. B. Retarded. B. Retarded. B. B. Retarded. Stomp your hands and clap your feet. Retardation can't be big. You know, you know, you know we retarded. T A R D T A R D. Retard, retard, yeah. Woo. My name is William, and I like to wear dresses. Serious, serious XM. The fire, the virus. The Opie and Anthony Show. Get back. We're back with Norton and Friends. It's better than ever. We're back. Greg and Tony are here. Jim Jeffries is here. Jim Kenny's Jeffries. Here. And, and Daniel. Uh, uh, we actually have, uh, I guess, Cliff Clavin coming in. Really? Yeah, cool. uh, great to be here, boys. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking... Jim Jeffries does a great uh, Cliff I'll, I'll tell you, my, I, got, I, I was doing uh, the Edinburgh Festival. And, um, you know, the Edinburgh Festival is like the big comedy festival in mm -hmm. Scotland. And the theater next to me, George Went was in a like a sketch group, you know, Norm from Cheers. Yeah. And me and him, because we had dressing rooms next door to each other, we sort of got along over the course of the month. Like we spoke to each other each day and like, hello. hello. And he liked me until I got drunk. And it would always end with me going, hey, Normie. Yeah. I just oh, blew, no. And he's just probably like, all right. <laughs> so a couple of years ago. Fucking heard and it. So he, if you saw me sober, he was like, hey, Jim. If you saw me drunk, that fat old the man way. would run away. <laughs> Uh, he was on. He was actually on on the show. George went. That mm. was the day I was off. But Opie and Jimmy, yeah. uh, had quite the pisser with him. Disastrous interview. Uh, yeah, kind of kind of slow, was it? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Not good. And what did you do wrong? What happened? He's selling a book about beer. Okay, <laughs> his book was about his favorite beers, which sounds like an absolute dud waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, but we sat with him, and he was really like talk, not talking much and being very low key. So I was asking about drinking and stuff, and just about not being on Cheers anymore. It was kind of depressing. Yeah, that's what he I just heard. Got, he just got really sad. And yeah, it was depressed. It's and it's kind of a... want me to leave. And, oh, so. oh, he actually asked that too. Yeah. Oh wait, he uh... just he didn't like being on Cheers anymore. He didn't. No, like... no, 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 no. We we were. He thought we were just uh, bringing up <laughs> sad things. <laughs> He, but he, he brought out, he brought out a book about beer. Like he does know that he's not Norm. Right? Yeah, but yeah. That, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's like you're not Norm. But... It's like the guy from Dexter bringing up a book about murder. Yeah, <laughs> these are the people have killed. It's a show. Do we yeah. have any George Wendt really clips we can play for Jim Jeffries real fast? Because it was a moment, man. Me and Jimmy, hey, Normie, uh, don't you let those boys push you around? <laughs> me, and, me and Jimmy, it was uh, if uh, Jim Norton just speaks <laughs> to you that way, you tell him to come and see me. <laughs> And was out that day. I mean, and Jimmy yeah. were in this weird oh. place with him. It was great. It's terrible. <laughs> we wanted to call him out. I, I, I wish I would have it was uh, fucking been hideous. here for that one. It was hideous. But it was so depressing. I hear, he was uh, so depressing. I hear John, though, is uh, a little more. He's done a few more things, though. 
than George Went has done. George Went's boy, he's done all this stuff with Pixar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's Toy done Story. I mean, he did. He, he did a wonderful Im infomercial for Stern Pinball. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, I like, I like pinball, and then and and, and, he, and he did a documentary on their factory. <laughs> oh well, he had that show where he would travel around America and and kind of. Uh, Talk about weird things in, yeah. in weird places, like, you know, giant frying pan in Idaho or something. Yeah. Uh, it's all quality television. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he, he's done other stuff. So I, I would gather he'd have more to talk about than a, a George Bent. I, I tell you what I did yesterday. On the way home, when I was going back to Jersey, back to the hotel, I read the William Shatner book, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and good, I, right? you, you, do, you read it in his voice in your head yeah. when you read it. <laughs> but there was this thing that he, he sort of, things about Shatner, which you were talking about on the show, and it said... Uh, well, I hosted nine one one, and it, it saved, uh, which is like a crime watch thing. Like it was the rescue nine one one. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen these people? It's one of those shows, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, and it saved over three hundred and fifty lives that TV program, right? <laughs> and I remember that fucking program on Australian TV. Yeah. And it, it actually killed a few people because. <laughs> Our, our number's triple O. Oh, we don't shit. Really <laughs> people dialing 911. So many, so many people started watching that show. But like, there was like just kids with like a dying grandmother next to them just going, the phone's not working. 911. <laughs> so, so he, might, he might have saved lives in that country. <laughs> Please hang up and try again. Yeah. <laughs> you dialing the wrong number. One. All right. Give it another go. Give it a hey, go. You know what I always hated about triple zero? Because when I was young, I, I, it, it, we had like one of those, you put the finger and you pulled it around. Yeah, the rot and went rotary dial. dial. Yep. The, the zero was right at the end. Yeah. So there's, there's the longest number to call for an emergency. <laughs> yeah. like, like your house is burning down. There's an emergency. Oh, fuck. Zero, zero, I remember zero. the rotary phones, you used to force it back. You're like you're in such a hurry that you, you, you'd take the dial and you'd, you'd go to the finger stop and then push it back it was amazing oh, how they God. worked though that it just if you had to just stop your finger in that thing like it even at the early days of the phone that didn't look like a system no it didn't look like something <laughs> anyone look like, like like if someone could have brought that in and you go no that that yeah, won't work no that's not work the right on one just better. try having the numbers on buttons yeah and right, push it on we weren't those. pushing buttons yet yeah, they yeah. couldn't figure that out they they actually didn't Fuck. have push button phones until like I, the no, 60s I, I know but it seems like they should have had I'll a tell you an invention that i thought took for fucking ever to get going <laughs> Was the making stamps stickers? Like, you know how you get a stamp now, oh, yes. and it's just a sticker. You just stick it on the fucking envelope. Yeah, you don't have to lick You'd it. You'd go into the post office. They'd be selling different stickers in the post office box, and there'd still be that old bag with a fucking sponge <laughs> sitting next to. <laughs> and you're like, surely someone can figure out a better system than this fucking adhesive that you have to put on your tongue. That yeah, very unsanitary too, because yeah. you know, where the fuck Absolutely. do they store those stamps and everything? They were supposed to have them a lot earlier, but they didn't because the adhesive they didn't think was going to work. The Simpsons are gonna end <laughs> up <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> That's such a lie. <laughs> I, I, I was I was watching a a thing on YouTube about uh, the change from rotary phone to push button phone. Right. And they actually uh, Were you just watching it now? Or? No, no, I had watched it like maybe a week ago. Okay. And, and the uh, it was put out by the phone company, which was the phone company back then. Yeah. And it was the lady that did the the uh, demonstration. She had to demonstrate. Uh, and now you push a button, and this is how you would dial this number. And it's the same woman that now still does, if you'd like to make a call, please hang up. And <laughs> it's her fucking voice. My, it's the same woman. My life was better before the phone companies got unrestricted. Yeah. Right, because before, if we wanted to ring my grandmother in Queensland from Sydney to Brisbane or whatever, it was, like, now it's the same price as ringing anywhere in Australia. Right. right? But it was like $5 a second, and, you, <laughs> and your dad used to stand next to you with a watch and just pass it on to your brother, and you'd go, happy birthday, grandma, pass it on to your brother, like that, right? And then, yeah. and then when they, they deregulated, it's like, we can talk as long as we want. You're like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on this conversation forever now. People used to actually say that, like, make it quick. Fucking Skype, my mother loves Skype. Right, my mother will oh, sit man. there on Skype and just look at me. 
And I'm like, uh, you know what you should do? Got nothing to Fuck, say, just get, staring. Work up a rod, and then just stand up and let her see it and walk off fucking camera. <laughs> She'll never do that again. <laughs> the thing is, uh, my, my mom also was um, big on when she found out that she, she, she bought this call plan that she could call America for as much as she want for 10 bucks or something like that. And my excuse used to always be, I need to do a shit. Right? Oh, <laughs> mum, I gotta go. I gotta do a shit. <laughs> right? And my mum's like this. She'd be like, I'll wait. Oh, and no. I didn't need to do a shit, so I just walk away from the phone what I thought an appropriate amount of time for a shit was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come back like, all right, I'm, I'm back again. Hey, do we have time to talk about uh, that guy from Occupy Wall Street? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, do we have like two minutes before John comes in? I tell you, the worst thing... Because we have an update on this kid. He came in yeah. uh, the other day. He's one of our interns, and he's occupying Wall Street, man. He's, he's pretty one articulate of the guys. on the air. Pretty articulate, making his points. I don't know how much I believe or agree in yeah, whatever, uh, with, yeah. but he, you know, he was well-spoken. He's there for the fingering. And, but, yeah. and, and then he yeah. figured some broad and... Uh, do we have time? Why are we closing the curtains? But he, um, we, we for guests, we're doing that from now on. After oh, last oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. but but he, uh, he here, here's the deal. He got a bunch of tweets, I guess, because I was reading some twi tweets about it, and uh, people we people were digging it. Here? Okay. They were digging it. Yes, yes, absolutely. you know, and they're like, oh my god, hey dude, he should be on this. That. Uh, and I think it may have from from the buzz that's going around. May have inflated his ego a bit too really? much for an intern. What happened to your college shirt? Now you're looking more like a hippie today. Yeah, you well, he's, bum. He's famous <laughs> now. He can yeah, yeah, sweat. Yeah. Casual. So you went back down there and slept? I no. I actually oh. I, I went back to Brooklyn and I slept. I hadn't slept in a few days, so that's probably why I was so wired and kind of on key yesterday. Yeah. Was that yesterday? Yeah. You were on with us? Oh, oh wow. Right. I don't even Jeez. remember. I know, I know. It seemed like but, three days ago. But, but right? uh, uh, the, the listeners, um, especially during the replay, I started noticing a lot of uh, tweets saying, hey, it was pretty good. It was that. But uh, now, uh, you know, the kind of the big head, the, uh, and now, and now, and now the, yeah. I want more airtime. It's like a drug. He's a turning bit. into Ace Rothstein. Yeah. He really thinks who the fuck he is, don't he? Ace <laughs> Rothstein. <laughs> Ace is high. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so now I'm here, and, like, he kind of tried to weasel himself into the, the after show yesterday, and, you know, well, actually, I, actually evoked the name of Greg Opie Hughes as a, kind of a, a reference that said, maybe Opie, uh, wanted him on the after show. Well, I, I said, if it, I did say it was up to the guys. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, we don't run, yeah. we don't but run you, that 10 o'clock You hour. thought that, but you didn't hesitate to mention it. To, True. To, uh, I mean, I would have loved to, Danny to and host Travis. the after show. Well, Oh, 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 oh! He thought maybe he should sit at the big boy table with us because yeah, yeah just in so, case we well, start I, talking about him. He, there he right, there he is right, right there. there he is. Yeah, he'd be uh, a point of reference, wouldn't right, he? Right, right. I do want an update. You were down there yesterday. No, I, I didn't even. Oh, make so it you haven't even been down there since you've been oh, on our show? Oh shit! See. Oh, they get the fuck out. So why hey, is why you, big you, radio radio star now? Why, why were you late this there? morning if you weren't down there? What, what was the reason for being late? Exactly, he was late well, this morning. I slept. I went home and I slept. And the plan was to wake up mm. and go back down to Wall Street. So I would hopefully have some for today. And just the lack of sleep from the couple days before got to me, so and that I never woke up. kind of fucks up. up your cause. We're, we're trying to have sympathy for you for you people that need jobs, oh, but not, you can't be me. late to your internship. True. Yeah. And then expect to be hired. True. Yeah, that's true. true. I'm Thank on God. time, and I don't even work here. He was late. Yeah. I'd love to have an update for, uh, for oh, yeah. Monday or sometime next week. I, know, well, uh, I thought you had something so we'll today. see. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. And uh, I also heard uh, a day off. Took a day. Took a day. Uh, last week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, last yeah. Wednesday. Anything, anything, <laughs> like, <laughs> anything pressing? Yeah, that, was it something uh, pressing? That no, it was, it really was the tie, same thing, yeah. uh, no sleep Same thing, a little tired. <laughs> it is a tough schedule to adapt to. I, really? Know. Is Wait. it? Is it really? <laughs> Wait, so one of the guys from Occupy Wall Street was late today and took a day last <laughs> <laughs> It writes itself. <laughs> right down the toilet. It writes itself. The, uh, the <laughs> argument. Shit. Well... Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you about how the Federal Reserve works. <laughs> yeah. The world is sleeping. The world is <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Nothing. You know what wakes you up? Yeah. A nice face full of mace yeah. from the uh, police or a fucking nightstick across yeah, the head. Interns are sleeping, too. <laughs> keep printing more money.
Yeah. 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 Well, yeah I can't print more time. <laughs> <laughs> like the way you think. <laughs> well, why, wake, why wake up and earn your money when you could yell at rich people to give it to you? That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh. And by rich, anybody wow. making anything. You, got, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, you, you know, want to comment on that's that? The They're uh, sleepy. Uh, sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. know, I, I, I was wondering, is this the first intern class where there's no nicknames? Because it's just right now, it's intern Matt, intern Sal. Oh, you want a nickname, do you? You want a nickname. Right. What's your nickname? Oh, yeah, you gotta wow. be, you got to be around for us to give you a nickname. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. How, about, yeah, how about Johnny Comes Lately? Uh, Chip. Actually, that was a good one, Chip. I like, I like that, that one. Thanks, huh? I think we just <laughs> named you Sleepy. <laughs> oh, shit. Sleepy. Some people are uh, <laughs> recommending Fingers. <laughs> I did that. Uh, Tardy. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Finger Pop. Tardy's good. Tar Tardy. Tardy is a good name. Tardy is a good name. Tardy. He don't like that one. Hey, where's Tardy? Uh, uh, how, about, uh, how about Stuttering John, 1998? Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Stuttering John. Really you look like many, yeah. The hairdo. Yeah. No, I was oh. looking to see if somebody uh, actually had nah, we'll figure it out. names. But no, you tar can't, you tardy can't beat Tardy. Tardy is good. Yeah. good. The only thing about Tardy is just the kind of... You shut up, Tardy. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Oh. That's, that's the beauty of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we you get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only a Tard wouldn't get that joke <laughs> straight up. Oh. Like, it would go, well, it's got uh, retard connotations. <laughs> <laughs> See, really? You're learning a lot about radio right now. See yeah. how one day you're on top, the next yep. day you're a piece of yeah, shit. Yeah, a piece yep. of shit. E -Rock, that is, uh, e -Rock yeah. wants in on this. E-Rock wants in. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he's had it with this kid already. So you know, oh, no. you're discussing, you know. Iraq, by the way, let me just uh, preface this. Iraq, by the way, is in charge of the interns. He's like the well, boss of the interns. And, and why is that? Because uh, Travis uh, can't be trusted with interns. <laughs> oh my God, he, he molests them. Yeah, well, that's that's hearsay. <laughs> Look at Travis. Travis just yeah. wants us to move on. And the funny thing is, is like, you know, we, we've all noticed little things about intern Matt, and like with Eric being, and Eric, you know, he, he shares a lot. He shares a lot of the thoughts that we all do. Oh, sure. And I'm I'm actually surprised it's taken Eric because I know Eric's had his little issues with him. So I'm surprised it's actually taken this long oh. for it to bubble oh, Do you know right. anything about this? Uh. Well, I think me and Eric have gotten off to a good start. All right, well, let's see what Eric says. Oh, no. Eric just rolled his eyes and uh, shook his head. This new Eric rules. Oh, geez. Much like a great white rolling his eyes and <laughs> shaking his head. <laughs> God, um, E-Rock. So here's the thing. He, he starts, we're talking to him, trying to get a feel for his personality, what he wants to do here and everything. He doesn't really want to do anything but be a character oh, for the show. Mm. Um, uh -oh. he, he's expressed not only to me but to other people that he goes, He's like, you know, like intern David and Love Buzz and Oscar. These were, you know, these were people that, that made it on the air. And I said they made it on the air for being who they are, that you guys picked up on this and brought them in. Not I will do a million different things to try to become the next person uh -huh. on the show. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, and boy. he doesn't want to hear that. Oh, See, and then, and then what happened was you guys gave him the Occupy Wall Street angle. Oh, and then now, yeah. now it's the hook he needed. Oh. But then Boy. he blew it by <laughs> sleeping in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that would have been if that would have been your thing. And if you would have had like an, another segment, and like, well, here's what happened today. It would have been like, all right, there's our guy down there. We need a guy down there. That would have been a regular yeah. segment. But he was a segment. little sleepy. You know what, Opie? Uh, he, I heard him say earlier, and I don't know if you caught this. This is a very hard schedule. Mm. I don't know if you caught that. Well, it is. I mean. Five in the morning? <laughs> you gotta wake up at three thirty. See, I was being yeah. a little sarcastic. I've been doing it for fucking ever. We've been doing yeah. it. It's, it's we're seven years in on this schedule. I, I was doing stand up last night Dude. and everything. Yeah, I still yeah. showed it's, up. It's yeah. the me, me, me yeah. generation. I, I came from Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jim, you do have like eight Red Bulls. I mean, to get that is true. Yeah, that is true. Oh, yeah, that is. oh shit! Now he's shitting on the guests. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not good. Oh damn! I know it. Yeah. I you did. know you have to make sacrifices to get I, where you want to be, right? Yeah. yeah. I did come here so, for the free Red Bull. No, no, you should protest <laughs> so that other people could sacrifice. I'm That's true. I'm still on fucking Team Tard. Yeah, you like yeah, Team Tard. I'm yeah. still on Team Tardy. Tardy. Team, yeah, team, team Tardy. Tardy. I say we got to give him another shot. He did a good job yesterday. He can't just be the GOAT today. All right, Monday he should have a big uh, Occupy Something, Wall Street yes. update. That's right. Well, right. Yeah. I will. Yeah, well, yeah, because there, there's supposed to be some shit going down this weekend, right? I think it might. Yeah, I think it's been good. To something's website. gonna have to happen. Oh, it's gonna be yeah. in the eighties too. Imagine how it's gonna yeah, it's smell. Nice out. Oh, <laughs> so he might take nice the day out. off. Anthony, do you think problems sleep? 
No, of course they don't. They're always there. No, it's no. like crime. It's exactly. Like, it's like crime. It's just there. The news is saying it went viral, though. What? The Occupy Wall Street has gone viral. Yeah, and you know what happens? popping up in you all the You know what happens cities. with viral things? They fucking get old and go away. Oh, boy. That is true. Yeah. I heard, yeah, like, You can't Philly get rid of a Boston. virus pretty quickly. You take yeah. a one-day Zithromax and oh. it's gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric's got something else. What? So... Uh, six o'clock comes around. You know, we we're starting the show and everything, and Matt's and not you, here. And you just got in. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> you're listening to it in the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over, the, over the sounds of the motors creaking. Sorry. I haven't seen him yeah. for, for a while, and he has gotten fat. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly, I hardly recognize him. He's, he's squeezing into that booth. Yeah, it's hard to hear the show with the alarms going off. Doesn't it look like we're at SeaWorld? <laughs> <laughs> Tap on the glass, he'll come up to it. Yeah. <laughs> Feed him a fish or something and cut his throat. Holy oh, shit! shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Chip. Out of your, out of your fucking mind. Uh, sorry, Iraq. So it's 6 o'clock. So we don't see Matt. I give him a call. And uh, it's ringing and ringing and ringing. I'm waiting to leave a voicemail, but nothing picks up. Finally, he answers the phone, mm. and I thought he was, like, kind of fucked up, right? So I said, Matt, where are you? Are you coming in? Yeah. Um, and I go, did you go to the Wall Street thing again last night? Because if he was there, I would, you know, we'd have some more material. Obviously, yeah. No, no, I, I, I didn't set my, uh, my, my alarm, but I can uh, come in. I'll be in there about an hour, or I could just, you know, take another day off. <laughs> So he gave me the options of what he wanted to do today. Right, right. And I said, get off the phone and get your ass in here. Oh! Nice. Whoa. Tough Iraq. Whoa. Yeah. But he didn't lie. He didn't lie. He said, I forgot to set my alarm, and no, I didn't go to Wall Street. So I'll give him credit for that. He didn't lie. All right. Yeah, yeah. Iraq, he sounded tough on the phone. I was a little... I mean, it definitely got me up and up. He I'm like, did oh, like, shit. oh, shit. Iraq, Iraq is pissed. Iraq's never been the boss of anyone, so yeah. it's kind of cool for him, I think. He's nef definitely not the boss of his diet. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Jim, just the poor fat kid. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> can't help himself. He's going he's gonna to pass on a lot of anger to these poor kids. Oh, I know. Oh, man, that's all I'm imagining is, like, all the years of, of shit, shit he's taken. He's yeah, had yeah, to yeah. take. Got to come out one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, e I, I've tried. I mean, we, we sat down and we talked with him. Oh, boy. One, one day last week, he, he didn't show up till later, and he called me. He fell asleep on the train and, and woke up at the Trade Center. So he's down there waiting to find another train to come back up. Right. Gets up back here about 7 o'clock in the morning. We have a we'll talk. We're explaining what he needs to do and, and, you know, how to straighten all this stuff out. We'll start over. Mm -hmm. The next day is when he decided to take the day off. Right. And he was. we thought we were making progress. He came on the air. He did okay. You know, had a great segment. Yeah. And then he pulls this shit again. So it's just constantly going up and it's down. It's a real case of one step forward, two steps back. <laughs> He uh, he took out. <laughs> don't forget, God he took out a, he took out a loan for his internship. Yeah, and and yeah. And, and then you know prefers maybe not to show up. Yeah. Uh, and and yet the banks are the bad people that that <laughs> that are fucking uh, student loans. Isn't it? You know, if you're gonna have to pay back the student loan, you might as well. You know, put in but the, it doesn't mean that he was wrong about it. No, just because he's a heap of shit. I mean, <laughs> no disrespect. No, no but, offense. No disrespect. Yeah, but you know what? It's it's it, it's people like that that are the reason that no one's taking this movement seriously. Yeah. Because for every one person that is making legitimate sense out there, there's probably a hundred of this kid. Oh boy! Oh, you're I, that kid. Uh, you're I'm that kid boy. now. No, I blame boy. it on thermite paint. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's the thermite paint. I know it. You think it's a coincidence? He <laughs> fell asleep on the train. They put <laughs> sleeping gas in there. Yeah. Stop it, Jesse. Right, Stop right, it. Right, What's Jesse. Wrong? We get it, Jesse. Yeah. Fucking, it's a conspiracy. Ooh, look out. <laughs> they didn't want him to know about the paint, right, Ant? No, no, they didn't, Shipper. What are you doing? Uh, Hopping right, right, uh, Is, you is you our you guest move? here? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Moving, Jim Jeffries is going to hop a seat over to the right. And then uh, we got John Ratzenberg. Wow, this is great. Take a seat, sir. Boy, are you well-dressed. 
Oh, well, yeah, because I, 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 I was at Woodstock. It's my fault that you guys are dressed like you are. That, is that it? So I'm trying to undo my damage. <laughs> undo the damage, huh? Yeah. It's no, just, you, look, you look very spiffy, very nice today. A matter, a matter of thank you. I, 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 uh, I, I was at Woodstock, and uh, I was actually there. Actually you were at, at Woodstock. And I remember one of the local farmers saying, I've never seen so many out-of-work uh, farmhands in my life. Because <laughs> everybody had jeans, T-shirts. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dressed like uh, uh, farmers. Yeah. That yeah. was a whole movement thing back then going on. Uh, oh, it's and, still here. And it, is it, well, now there's uh, the Wall Street thing going on here in New York is the big uh, movement that really isn't doing much. Yeah, but Hendrick's not going to play there. No, is he? no, you're not going to see uh, the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> played by Jimi Hendrix uh, there. Uh, were you partaking back then when you were in uh, at Woodstock? No, you know what? I, I mean, I had long hair, uh, a beard. I was a carpenter. I was a journeyman carpenter. Head through to New England, and that's how I uh, found out about the job. I happened to be in the area working on on a house, but no, that always just got in my way. It just to me it was more annoying, right? The, the uh, mood altering, brain altering stuff. Yeah, just uh, you know, the operate heavy machine. I mean, that's the last thing. You wow, want, you know? <laughs> that, that's that's tr kind of true. Yeah, yeah you know, the saw and mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I, I always I always looked at it as a as a very hip way of being lazy. I'm yeah, not having right. to do anything with your life. That's true. I, I will say it, it, it would make you lazy. I think that's yeah, what screwed yeah. my, my high school career up. I was doing really good in, in school up until uh, I started smoking pot, mm. and then it just uh, went right out the window. I haven't smoked in uh, many, many years, by the way. I have a question for you about the Cheers audition, too. Did you, because uh, this was very ballsy, did you go on the audition and not have a good read, and then yeah. actually just decide, like, come back and go, look, can I do that again, but as a character? No, it was even... Uh, uh, <laughs> more desperate than that. See, I, I prior to that, I was I was living and working uh, in Europe, in England for ten years, and I was doing really well as an actor. Uh, yeah, an actor, yeah. And so I, I came to Los Angeles. It was a writing job I got hired to do to write a, a show based on the life of the Emperor Nero for CBS. And then, and then somebody said, "Hey, this Cheers thing." And blah 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 blah. I said, "Yeah, okay, I'll go in." But up until that point, I had never auditioned in my life because I didn't go to acting school. I just it was on the job training for me. Mm. So I didn't know what auditions were even about. So they handed me the paper. I thought, oh, this is nice. This is what I'm supposed to chat about. <laughs> so I walk in, and I'm looking around the office for a chair. And the guy says, Jimmy Burroughs, as a matter of fact, said, uh, what are you looking for? I said, well, my chair. I thought, I'm going to sit down. He says, you're not here to chat. You're, you're, <laughs> oh, you're, 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 you're uh, right off and, on a bad foot right there. Oh, no, so I, I, I remember all the blood just rushing out of my mouth. <laughs> I just I was so scared. So I did a very bad job, but on the way out the door, one foot out the door, one foot still in. I could see my 8 by 10 wafting into the wastebasket. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody you know, ripped it up. And uh, I said, you have a bar know-it-all. Because growing up in New England, I grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Every bar has got a horse's patootie, thinks he knows everything. And, and you were originally auditioning for Norm, correct? I forget which yeah. it was a part of somebody at the bar. I mean, yeah. In the beginning, they had more characters than they did, sure. you know, at the, mm -hmm. the second year. But it was just a, a a part. I don't know whether the, the part was called George or Norm or. Mm. But uh, I mean, that that all part is all just blank to me. I just remember <laughs> the fear. So I improvised. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I said, you know, and, and there's, there was a character <laughs> that I always liked using on in in Europe. I did the improvised comedy, but it was. Oh, a bunch of stock characters I'd use, but then they go, you know, the uh, newspaper was originally printed vertically. <laughs> and so they, <laughs> they start laughing to the point where I was just trying to maintain my dignity. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just say, okay, so guys, good luck with this show. I'm out of here. But two days later, I got the call and uh, was there for 11 years cracking jokes. What wow, ball? That uh, just to, that's just to great, do a yeah. character that wasn't even in the script. I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah, it, I, was, it, it, it really was just like, I need them to know I know what I'm doing. Right. And I don't want to stand there and make excuses. I never went to acting school. I've never auditioned before. It wasn't even your smoke. It wasn't even getting the job at that point. It was just kind of trying to restore was, your dignity. Yeah, that's yeah, all it was. Yeah. Because I was, I was doing real well in London. I mean, yeah. I, when I and first you, got there, 10 years prior, I was living in an abandoned building. But after the 10 years, I was doing I had a nice apartment near Hyde Park and blah, blah, blah. Were you doing uh, live shows or, or yeah. film? Yeah, uh, first first six years did live shows all through Europe. Um, you know, Edinburgh Festival in London, all through uh, England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Holland, Germany, wow. Italy, France. Uh, and then the last five years, I started doing movies. I did about 28 movies over there. What kind of live uh, live shows were you doing? Was it comedy-based? or? Yeah, it was two of us. Um, 
called ourselves Sal's Meat Market. And uh, we, we, it wasn't like, you know, a second city. We, we just called making stuff up. That's what we called. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know yeah, that yeah. there was a word called improv. Nothing fancy, just <laughs> making stuff up. But yeah. we would do a show that would change 80 to 95% every night. Because wow. we knew the beginning, we knew the middle, we knew the end. But the getting there always changed. Because... Now, were you taking audience suggestions like improv does? No. Or were you guys just... No, I mean, we would as, as a goof. From time to time, but no. But the audience knew that the show was going to change, so we had repeat audiences every oh, night okay. because it was a different show, but the same story. Yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> what, what, no, we just we did it uh, again out of desperation. We didn't know what <laughs> yeah. we were doing. How, how long ago was this? Thing? I've done the Edinburgh Festival myself like yeah. uh, ten times. Uh, yeah. how, how long ago did you do Edinburgh? Like. 72, 73. That's when six people showed up. I, I didn't wow. even know it, uh, the festival was that old, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, oh, I think it's, it started uh, in the 50s. But that, again, I mean, wow. yeah, Billy Connolly was there and a bunch mm -hmm. of people you know now, but uh, yeah, maybe five, ten thousand people showed up, but now it's got to be half a million. Oh, it's massive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I sold, yeah. so, sold 20,000 tickets last time I was there, so... I think myself, so that's like... <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but still to this day, the average size of, a, uh, uh, the average size of an audience at that um, festival is five. Really? Yeah, because most gigs are just called off because no one shows up. And then oh, you get really? the really successful shows. But you, it's not like you go to Montreal or you go to Chicago or you go to Melbourne where they're all invitation shows. Like the comics are invited to go... Mm -hmm. Anyone can perform at the Edinburgh Festival if you've got the balls just to put your fucking show on and play. Really? Oh, it. really? So yeah. You get a lot of fucking whack jobs up there, I tell you. So yeah. there, was, there was a guy in his uh, jockey shorts on a unicycle uh, <laughs> juggling uh, machetes. <laughs> he's the, he's he the prime about minister now. Yeah, he's, just, he's just going like this. And I'm in the crowd watching him because I brought my kids over there a few years ago. I said, you got to see this. And then he's, he's, he looks down at me and goes, you started like this, didn't you? Because that's where well, oh, right, right. Right. I started at the Edinburgh Festival when they doing the Fringe. I got <laughs> I, I got to tell you, me, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I truly, truly mean that. I really am. Oh, he's, been, he's been talking. I've been talking yesterday. about it since yesterday. You kept calling him Jeff Ratzenberg. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's my but, cousin. But, oh, but, but, he's a tool and die maker. <laughs> but me and my brother play a game called What Movie Cliffy's In. And if we see you in a movie, then we have to just talk <laughs> as you in that movie forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's like there's like that scene where like uh you pick up Candace Bergman in the Jeep in right. Gandhi to uh take Candace Bergman to see Gandhi and who would have thought Cliff would have been in Gandhi but he was. <laughs> yeah. And for the rest of that film my brother was going, Yes, I'm uh, gonna see that uh, thin Indian guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Who's that guy? Wait, wait, why aren't you eating? You know that uh, eating makes you healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Must be going through chemotherapy. That's what I hear is it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good game. That's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's internet worthy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Star Wars, the two yeah. Superman films. Empire Strikes that's, Back. Yeah, yeah, that's where we all go off, man. Yeah, but, now, uh, what, what character were you in uh, uh, Empire? You had that scene Major Durlin. The, yeah, right, right. Major Brent. That was actually my first action figure, too. Was it? I got yeah. There's they exist. <laughs> they're they're, they're out there. And that that was <laughs> made hat. that was made while you were in England, I assume, as well, because they all sold. They, yeah. they did that the um, Earl Street uh, Studios, whatever it is. Earl Street. Yeah, yeah. Up yeah. in uh, well, just in North London. Yeah. yeah. What was that character in the movie? What part? Well, was, what part was, of the film? He was, was the uh, uh, commander of the Rebel Air Force. I'm the one who told Princess Leia we got to close yeah, the doors. So these uh, rebel yeah. scum have to get out. Of <laughs> <laughs> so he just talked like from, from, from then on. From then on, me and my brother would just be cliffs just off in space. <laughs> I would mean, follow his adventures that have never happened. Like, hilarious. I have a whole backstory to every small part you've ever done. <laughs> is, is, is he the bridge too far? Oh, uh, uh, it's a big bridge here. I don't, I'm not going to say that one. I'm probably going to go far. across the river, Major. Yeah. <laughs> we got Nazis on the other side there, right? I don't know where to dodge those bullets. Yeah. That's exactly. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's, that's hilarious, funny. man. <laughs> Uh, you were in the, you were in that one. Yeah, I do that to oh, my yeah, yeah, I, do yeah, that, yeah. I do that to my nephews and nieces, and they're like, oh, he's doing the pig from Toy yeah, Story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the action figure. Oh, one of them. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Damn, that's a pretty manly looking yeah, action yeah. figure. Yeah. I used to look like that. That's an action. Uh, yeah. I used to go to church dressed like that. That's like a holy the Jesus. Yeah. There, 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 yeah, there, there it, it is. is. The second row of that one. That's wow, one. man. Yeah. Jesus is the internet Christ. something? Look at that. The oh, internet yeah, is yeah. something. That's a great face face picture. How easy is that? 
The thing is now with the Blu-ray thing, with George Lucas fucking with it, you're all in CGI uh, now and you're a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you look pretty badass in that. I've got to tell you. That, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't screw with that guy. Yeah, like, he looks no, tough. No, you should. Tough guy. I like yeah, that. I can show you scars here. <laughs> uh, no, I, I grew up uh, just down, down the road here in a, uh, the bucolic seaside village of Bridgeport. Okay. Oh, right, yeah. Yes. ever been there. Enchanting. Bridgeport is, there, yeah. is uh, <laughs> it's lovely. Well, yeah, and and you say what? Is your brother really a tool and die maker, or you're a no, no, my, my, well, no, I, my, no I, I grew up. My uncles were, and they they were Bridgeport, they were, obviously the home of the Bridgeport milling machine. That's exactly yeah. right. That's, I used to do a little machining myself. Well, mm. I remember my uncles talking about it, and I know, <laughs> I know you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They, they talk about tolerances of one. Two thousandth of an oh, inch, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the fate of Western civilization depended on. And it, it sometimes would, yes. Yeah. Well, no, that's what I discovered when I got older that they were exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the the program I'm uh, the uh, the campaign that I'm involved in now, just getting kids back to working with their hands. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the Center for America dot org. Mm. I got to put that in because you can sure. go there, and anybody, you know, any any walk of life in the country can go to their schools, their manufacturing. Uh, their unions and say, how do we teach kids these skills? Because we're running out of them. Mm -hmm. we're, we're literally running out of people who know how to make and build things. Make things, right. The, yeah. Yeah, this country doesn't make oh, things the thing, anymore. You, America needs immigrants more than anywhere else in, in the world for things like this. It's Australians true. are coming over here in floods because you guys can't build stuff. No one's right. making <laughs> things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I, I always, uh, I, I worked for a living for like half my life was spent working and then the other half is this mm. which i don't consider work right. but it makes me appreciate the hell out of this because i know what it's like to be in an attic when it's 150 degrees in there oh. running duct work <laughs> it yeah. stinks it's not a fun thing to do but uh it was always one of those things where if worse came to worse i crawl back in the attic and ha at least have a roof over my head, <laughs> literally, and then yeah. uh, be able to pay for, you know, food. <laughs> See, a roof over my head. Yeah, and yeah. I, I made an angle roof. Jimmy is cracking yeah, up at me. You've always got that to fall back onto. It's like Jesus and his carpentry. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't really like, if, that, that. if that God stuff didn't work out, you know, you could always make you a nice table. <laughs> Did he invent the table? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a little known fact at the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How did, how did you get from uh, from doing live shows to uh, film? Like, uh, not that it's was, a big because, jump, but... Um, I, the casting director uh, saw one of my shows and said, hey, you know, there's a... Uh, Richard Lester's doing a movie, and you know, so I went in and talked to him because over there you don't audition for movies; you just talk to the director, you chat. Because the casting director's job is is to make sure that you know what you're doing before they send you in the room. Mm -hmm. So they don't actually have you read; they give you a cup of tea. And so I'm That's sitting nice. talking to Richard Lester or uh, uh, Richard Attenborough, and we're just chatting. Wow! Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it was. One. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever see the footage of him? Uh, the great escape, man. being hoisted great up to those lights. Is, is he the guy that does the uh, the, the nature show too? Who's that? No, that's his brother David. David. Oh, yeah, different yeah, guy. Yeah. Okay. No, they're, but they're brothers. But David Attenborough is fucking ninety years old, and I'm telling you, that cunt will still poke a crocodile <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I've, seen him, I've seen him do it, and he, he does it so politely yeah. as well. Like, oh, oh, would you? Oh, that one's really coming yeah, to get me. That's <laughs> funny. Well, it's bad dogs yeah, and yeah. Englishmen. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. He puts that Steve Irwin to shame, doesn't he? <laughs> well, of course he did. Yeah, mm. yeah. Wow, that is funny. Did uh, you know uh, you you worked for Pixar? You did a lot of stuff at Pixar. Did you know Steve Jobs? Because I, I did. You did. Um, yeah. He was. I didn't realize that he was a big part. I mean, I found oh, out he, like, in the last week or so. He owned the whole I didn't thing. realize he was a big part of that. What he did one. with Apple overshadowed uh, that, yeah. and that's huge. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, just yeah, an he, amazing innovator. He was on the board of Disney like several times over, or whatever, because of uh, when he sold the company Pixar. Yeah, Good, nice guy. Great met him and stuff. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's he's the the kind of guy who uh, we, you know, we we used to in his generation. He was grow up. He was a tinkerer. Mm -hmm. He started in his garage, yeah, mm -hmm. and he went on to touch the lives of every single man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. He's the Thomas Edison of our time. Yeah, but what we've done in our wisdom was telling all the kids you got to go to college, got to go to college, mm. and kids don't play outside anymore. They don't discover right. things. Build a treehouse, fix your bicycle, so that 
Generations. Right, man. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't got time. I'm playing with my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, he was, he was, great point. what a great uh, gentleman, uh, just kind to a fault. But he, uh, he bought Pixar from George Lucas mm. at the uh, urging of Ed Catmull. And, uh, and John Lasseter it was put in charge, and boom. That's been working with them 17 years now. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the uh, the Toy Story movies obviously are just huge, man. You I kids? remember the you first got... time. No, no, no. But I'm you know what? I, like I, don't, I don't need them. Yeah, Monsters Inc. was amazing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's but it's those movies where you sit down, you watch, and you're you're amazed and stunned by what they did just to put that on the screen. But that goes away within a few minutes, and then they're real characters. You yeah, know, yeah, you, they're you, they're you, they're no longer them. just yeah. It's it's amazing how it's um, it's just a modernized version of animation, but there's so much depth to it, and uh, the writing's amazing how, too. How in good the is a movie when it's the third in a trilogy and it's nominated for the Oscar? Yeah, yeah. and it's a it cartoon. Wins. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just nominated with the rest of them. Like, and Toy Story three is one of the best films of the year. Like, unbelievable. And the voices are so familiar, uh, and that's that's kind that's of really cool. they're famous movie stars. Out there. I know, <laughs> I know, Jim Jeffries. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom Hanks, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a it was great the, that franchise. Opening of, the opening of Up, the, mm -hmm. the first ten minutes. You see that? Yeah, that was depressing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the old lady dying. I know. Yeah, I but, didn't like Up, but you're in tears and there's no dialogue at all. Yeah, but that's that's artistry. That's yeah, you know, amazing. That's, but they they go back to the golden age of Hollywood where you work on a story. Mm. Make mm -hmm. the story good and then make your movies. They don't do it, but now a lot of people do it opposite. Oh, we got these actors and we got. Let's see, it's a cowboy set, so let's get some horses. Yeah, what am I? <laughs> and I well, say, and they'll make movies like that. Now. Yeah, of saying, let's work three years just on the story. But that's why Pixar are so good at what they do. When you see shows now, because you were in such a successful show, I mean, do you think the writing has gotten a little softer or, or different? It has, right? It's, mm. not, it's no more, no more. I, the, the, you know, Ted Dance just wanted to drink and fuck chicks, like, <laughs> but it was realistic. But well, it's because the generation of writers that wrote Cheers and Frasier and uh, Wings, uh, they had grown up in a generation where they read books. Mm. The generation mm. of writers now have grown up watching television. Mm. So you're now getting things on sitcoms that were in sitcoms 20 years ago. Right. True. But there's the, when you grow yeah. up, when the writers that grew up in reading, reading books, they understand story, they understand character arc, uh, they get, they know how to craft a story. But now it's it's just different. It's, I, I, yeah. I, I watch Cheers. It's dated very well. Like I still watch it now. I yeah, yeah. Watch, you can watch an episode of Cheers now. And when Norm comes in this, and he says his opening line, it's still fucking killer. <laughs> it's like, well, I was watching one the other day, and they said, uh, how's life treating you, Mr. Peterson? And he goes, like, I'm sleeping with its wife, and it knows. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, that's a great line in any sitcom ever. That was, uh, yeah, because when you had the caliber of uh, people, the Charles brothers, uh, David, yeah, David Angel, who, who died in the 9-11 uh, mm -hmm. uh, crash, David mm -hmm. and his wife, Lynn. Uh, but these um, these are high caliber writers. They would read real books. Glenn and Les Charles, right? Glenn and Les they did Charles. Taxi Day. They start, yeah. They, they that's where they met Jimmy Burroughs, and then the three of them uh, gave birth to Cheers and a ton of other things. Now, know? Cheers initially didn't do very well in in oh, the we ratings. Were, we were we were dead last in the ratings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now, but now you see, like that would show would just be dumped. Oh, we. You they, did, I wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah, they don't give. I'd be in England. Being a yeah, mm. or something. <laughs> they don't give uh, they don't give shows a lot of time to to grow. But on the other hand, a lot of the shows you could tell right away they're trying too hard to build a character in one episode. Yeah, and, mm. and stuff. So that's exactly right because the the networks then Grant Tinker was the president of NBC, mm -hmm. and everybody around him told him to dump the show. We're in the last place, last place. Wow. And he said he was an old school guy. He said it makes me laugh. Let's keep it on for a little bit longer. So that September, when we had the beginning of our second year, was also the Emmys for the pr prior year. We won a bushel basket of them. So then the audience started watching the show. Right, right. So we were between number one and number five for the next ten years. But because of Grant Tinker. Right. And Steve yeah. Jobs was the same way. He didn't have focus groups. He didn't uh, turn to his marketing people. Hey, it made me laugh. Or, hey, that's he said, interesting. I like it. I like it. Yep. More working on a hunch, a human hunch. <laughs> 
than Intuition. some kind of slide rule mentality that's used now. That uh, oh yeah, like the, the new copy uh, sitcoms have just come out this year, and I won't I name can't anything. But Whitney stand it. And, and like, <laughs> you know, what's that? I haven't seen that. Uh, it's uh, not as good as the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you do that very well. Yeah. He really does, man. Uh, it's like uh, a hobby or something. <laughs> The whole childhood spent on you, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Some people had the Beatles. Uh, That's fantastic. Yeah, I, was, bro. I was abused. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I find like you can tell when there's because I've been in pilots as well. When they start going, um, the focus group doesn't like this character. We're going to yeah. take it out. It's it's always who fucking who wants to be in a focus group. A yeah, cocksucker, yeah. that's who. <laughs> who. Who's got time in the afternoon? No, no one with intellect. You're speaking to Wendy, whose husband's out, who is just like, and I go out and, and I take tablets on the side for income, and now I get to watch this show and say what I think of that, and people just pay me, and this mop's good, right? <laughs> and this is the fucking woman who's deciding my TV viewing. Yeah, yeah. Well, but also, also it's, she's got a, there's a lot of jobs at stake, a couple yeah. hundred jobs. Yeah. But they do a lot of that in Vegas. Vegas. They do a focus group, and now why Vegas? Wow, that yeah. doesn't this seem is like not a, your yeah. average audience. Your peers, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No one's desperate in Vegas. Probably gonna get for a cross money. section of the country. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing that's why, because they get everybody from everywhere in the country goes to Vegas. Everybody who yeah. wants to gamble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're okay. getting a cross section of the same people. You're getting, you're getting yeah. a yeah. cross section of all the douchebags <laughs> from all across the country. <laughs> But it they, takes away it, the intuition that the people in the in the in, in the networks right. have. Like uh, right. you know, Mash would have been canceled because uh, sure. it was tanking. But the head of the uh, network's wife liked it, and yep. she would talk to him in bed about how great this show was. So he kept it on because his wife was telling him That's what right. a great show it was. Seinfeld mm. was another one that initially uh, three big right. shows they, they didn't they like it. Moved yeah, it yeah. time right? slots like yeah. three times for Seinfeld, didn't they? And yes. that but, was an utter, utter failure. Seinfeld. No, no, so. it did well. Oh, did it, little yeah, old Jim? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, yeah. Three yeah. biggest shows. I can't think of any bigger sitcoms. I mean, maybe Ray is in that category too, everybody loves Raymond, but yeah, they all big. would have been cancelled by today's standards. All three of them would have been fucking yeah. axed with six months. But that's that whole thing, like Ray yep. Romano, he was fired from news radio, and then oh, replaced really, yeah. with Joe Rogan. Like, uh, he, same with UFC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray Romano was told he wasn't a good enough actor, and he was fired, and then Letterman gets behind him, gives him Everyone Loves Raymond, and then the next year, he bloody wins the Emmy for Best Comical Huge. Actor. Yeah, and so you know things turn around. Hopefully, you you also you did that show where you kind of went around the country and yeah, made in America. I was, yeah, uh, yeah. We were the beginnings of all those shows, right? Because we let people know that hey, there's a whole other world out here where people really work for a living. Yeah, let's yeah. take a camera out and talk to the you went, workers. You went to the Stern Pinball Factory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I watched that. Jim's like, he yeah, knows what yeah. he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's the, these are. For me, these are the people that are essential to mm -hmm. our society. You know, it's they make stuff. Yeah, that's what we used to do. That's what brought us to the dance: make stuff, build stuff. So that's why. Well, even this week, uh, AOL. If you go to AOL, I'm uh, hosting a pro program there about uh, jobs, skilled jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, with the Center for America dot org. Um, it's uh, what I'm trying to do is bring dignity and respect back to exactly those people. Because, and it was through Made in America, I noticed that the average age is 56 years old so six to ten years they're gone they're done wow yeah yeah really? you're not going to have any bridges when you turn on that water tap yeah yeah water. nothing comes out mm -hmm. you you brought up an interesting point earlier and i we've talked about this i've noticed that yeah i'm sure he's got to go i gotta hate that uh the, i don't uh, have to go i got nah, yeah, these people not we're not saying it, but you guys are saying you have other press. Yeah, Do I? yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd rather but but the, the, the whole thing <laughs> but, when they I was won't growing love up, you as much as we do. <laughs> I know, <That's> exactly. <laughs> Damn it! Right. When, when I was growing up, I remember like if your bike chain broke, you fixed it. You got a flat tire. Yep. You roughed up that tube and got the glue out. You built go karts, uh, tree forts. You really don't see that happening anymore. No, and you uh, just buy another bike now. You throw it away, buy yeah. it, go on the Kmart or whatever. And right that now. is the beginning of what makes somebody, uh, gives them that um, mind for right. mechanics and stuff. Uh, uh, West tinkering. Point, they say the best officers in West Point come off of farms. Yeah. Because to be a farmer, you've got to do that. You Improvise. You've got to fix things with bailing wire. And you've got to do shit you don't yeah. like to do, which is get up in the morning and yeah. work and things that you just are yeah, very yeah. unpopular, but you make and yourself focus. do. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's right. So that's why I think it's you know to denigrate, denigrate people who are successful. Mm -hmm. I know tons of people who are multimillionaires that start off with nothing. Yeah, just nothing. But they had a dream, and, they went, and now we got you know people that want to punish people for that. I know, and that's I, I say that all the time. It's the American dream. 
uh, and and when you achieve it, when you achieve what you, this country is supposed to be based on, and what yeah. what it gives people the opportunity to get, once you get there, you're the bad guy. Yeah. And, yeah. and no matter how hard you worked for it, and then there's a bunch of people, especially now, that are looking to take and and yeah. say like, well, I I don't have what you have, so now you're obligated to give it to me. That's the entitlement uh, mentality. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. It never used to be like that. No, just... people understood. There's going to be people that are better off, people that are worse off. Sometimes luck comes into play. Sometimes there's a lot of things that happen in this country. The opportunities there, and uh, if you make something of yourself and achieve the wealth and and happiness, it doesn't necessarily mean that this guy is going to get the same thing. Yeah, it's only the pursuit it's, of happiness. Yes, right. right. And that's what yeah. I've been saying yeah. during these Wall Street protests. Yeah. When I'm, no, I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> <part of myself>. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I, I've never really. The scene where you lie politically, you don't usually make a, a big uh, uh, thing about it publicly. You know, the Democrats and Republicans both have ignored this this message. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm saying, look, yeah, you want to grow corn, you got to plant seed, you got to till the soil, but they want to do pixie dust. So, okay, <laughs> let's create jobs, and that's all they say is create jobs, and right. a ton of money, and then they go home. You know, it's it's like you know Obama and and uh, John Boehner being in the front seat of a car that they just built with no engine. But they're making the engine noises with their lips. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we're doing in this country today. Yeah, yeah. There's no engine because yeah. we're not training kids. We're not getting them interested in crafting things, building, innovating. I mean, that's what Thomas Edison. He was a tinker. As a oh, child. yeah. How much of that is lost, though, because of computer technology, too? Like, how much of that is because we don't have to use our hands in daily life nearly as much to get Somebody a, does. A lot. Because yeah. that electricity yeah, yeah. that comes into your computer comes from a dam with turbines. Someone's mm -hmm. got to build the turbine, maintain the turbine, and we're running out of those people, too. But that's parenting. That's parents saying, well, at least they're safe. I know where they are. Well, yeah, mm. but they, they, have they ever climbed a tree? Yeah, you know, yeah. Part of our job as children was to, like, to break a limb. <laughs> yeah, Our own, yeah. not the trees. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is true, yeah. I get I, hurt. I, I don't know how many times I was precariously perched on a branch trying to nail a two-by-four <laughs> into a tree <laughs> to build a tree for it. And usually you use nails, <laughs> oh, yeah, nails that were too small. Nails that were too small. Yeah, tree for it. And then you'd, uh, you'd, you'd actually go and pilfer from some construction there site. You go. And, mm. and And the hardest part was building that initial frame to lay the plywood on. Uh, but once that was done... Yeah, and that was gravy, just where you want to put your walls and that. But it, it gave you the ability to be able to build things. You learn how to use a handsaw and a hammer and nails. Yep. And, you and, know uh, what a rip saw was, a cross-cut yes. saw, and you, know, you knew the difference. Yeah, and you, and you got yelled at for using them. Do your they, dad would yell at you. Do they it. still do, teach that in schools in no. America? They don't yeah, have wood shop class. anymore? Oh, 25 man, years now. No. The computer classes. Oh, they, that, they, they, they still do in Australia. They, they still over. have wood shop and stuff in yeah. Australia. Well, that's why we're going to have to go to Australia for infrastructure. Yeah. Water systems that work. Yeah, we got to wrap. We have to wrap. In the next few minutes, I want to plug what John is here to plug, though. Yes. Uh, he's promoting the Center for America's 10 by 20 pledge campaign, 10 million jobs by 2020. Uh, and it's very simple. You can go to uh, centerforamerica.org, uh, or you can go to, uh, you know, www, as you know, uh, ratzenberger.com, R-A-T-Z-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E um, but centerforamerica.org is very easy to remember if you're out driving. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a great important. idea, and, and it's, it's something that, uh, like you said, people are talking about jobs and where are they going to come from but aren't doing anything about it and it is because they've never worked uh, by the way. right yeah everybody yes. watched they've never had a job oh mm. god you know? yes god this guy's smart yeah i i, I, just, I, I sounds I, like a bob no one to me yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you know you remember uh, <laughs> chip o'neill uh, yeah <laughs> They should remake uh, that show. Just bring them all. Yeah, I, I would suggest right. that. John, thank you, thank you so done, much, right? man. Yeah, we, we got to take off. Oh, now they're uh, coming in the door to get us. Yeah, here. I know, right? Uh, thanks nice. so much. And uh, you got a plug? Uh, real quick uh, I'll just be at uh, the Stress Factory in Jersey all this weekend. And then next month, I'm going to be at Caroline's on Broadway. Very cool, man. Uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you, I guess, Monday. Yeah, call us. 866 Wow One Wow That's 866-969-1969 Smartphone users send your feedback to feedback at opianthony.com